are live. Turn down the music. Okay, there we go. Hey, folks. Welcome to another stream on another machine. Uh, we are working on an LDO Voron 0.2 R1 kit today. Um, have this one for a while. Another project I've been putting off getting to, and this is going to be printed with all, well, it already has been, Hobo Banana. Hello, Aaron. Welcome. TikTok, Mr. Wick. Yeah, we're here. We're here. I, I was like just about to sit, hit live, and I'm like, you know what? I should probably go to the bathroom once, once more before I jump into it. So here we are. I have a bladder the size of a walnut. Too much information for you folks. Welcome to the stream. So, uh, I used CookieCAD ABS to print all the parts for this build. Um, I think it might be available for purchase now. I put a link in the description to CookieCAD's website. So I believe their ABS may be publicly available now, but they sent me some spools a couple months ago and I printed up all the pieces. So they sent Unicorn, which is with the accent color on this build, Unicorn and I don't know if it's going to show up very well on camera, but Dark Magic for the um, for the other color in here. Yeah, Cookie Cat is... I love the folks at Cookie Cat first and foremost. Nathan and Melissa are sweethearts. They are wonderful people. I love hanging out with them. Um, I have no affiliation to them other than being friends with the owners. Uh, I don't... No affiliate account, nothing. But... They're small batch. They're a small business, so their 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 prices are not as cheap as some other companies because they're trying to make some different stuff and they don't get to, you know, and they're not ordering pallets upon. Actually, they are, but it's not truckloads of filament when they're doing shipments and runs and stuff. So, Domenico, thank you for being here, even if you're just popping in for a bit. I appreciate it. So I got started on tea still hot. I get started on this build, and I wanted to put the frame together as I did with the Trident build before I started the stream, but then I remembered that a V0, you kind of build the frame up as you build. So I started putting the Z rails together and the Kirigami bed, and we just kind of reached a point where it was time to start streaming. So let's get to building this thing. Um, this is an LDO 0.2 R1 kit that I did purchase. This was not provided to me. Uh, I bought this one myself uh, a while ago, like Black Friday, there was like a killer deal at Matter Hackers and I picked it up. I don't know if I've ever used their Funfetti. Um, my favorite colors from Cookie Cad are Unicorn, which is what the printed parts for this build are. So it's like, it's a baby blue, uh, a pink and a purple transition spool. So that was part of the fun of this. Like I printed, I think I have two full V zeros worth of parts now because since it's a tran since it's a transition spool, I had to print like multiples of things and like a bed full of parts in one go. Like these, clearly these three were printed at the same time uh, to try and get it to transition faster. So, you know, it's fun when you're trying to learn to control a filament. I talked to Nathan and he gave me. Um, they, he gave me like the transition rate. It should be, I think it was 80 grams. I think it was something like that. Somewhere around like 80 grams of filament, or maybe it was 180 should go from one color all the way back to that same color, like a full transition. So I, after he told me that it really helped me out. And that's where like, like this one has, you can see it, it transitions from blue to the pink purple back to the blue. So I, I started to dial in and figure out where it really did what I wanted it to do. So, were you ever build a switch wire? Uh, probably not. I think a switch wire may be the one machine I may never build. Um, I would I would consider it, but what are you doing? My dog is just standing behind me, staring at the wall. Um, I would consider a switch wire, but I just want to build other stuff. Like, I, I, all I do is build Vorons at this point. I want to build some other stuff. Uh, I will be right, right, right back. I want to open the door to the studio. It's a little, uh, a little stuffy in here right now. Right back.
Sorry, folks. We're back. So there's a little stuffy in here. The You know, we're in that whole, like, is it spring, is it winter thing. Like, yesterday it was almost 80. Today it's like a chilly 60, but the studio is warm. Um, ah, you're in San Francisco now. Dark sm smoke gray panels now. I can't do clear ever again. Yeah, I'm kind of regretting. I ordered a clear acrylic panel for the top of the Trident electronics box. And I kind of wish I would have gone with a, uh, like a smoke acrylic, like a light smoke acrylic. If I ever get a larger laser, I'll have to do, uh, uh, where was that? I want to check. Uh, somebody else asked about what about the Trident? We're not done with the Trident build, obviously, but I'm waiting on the electronics panel. So I'm kind of in this weird spot where it's, it's about time to start wiring that thing. Like the next thing, um, I saw the tour. Thank you. I did see the notice or your, your note about it. And I, I watched it's, if you know anything about audio, audio is so freaking strange to once you start to edit audio, it's a very strange time because like my music is set to a limiter. So it does not go any louder than my speaking voice is right now. The music level cannot go louder than the loudest that I'm currently speaking to you folks on stream. But my voice in a talking manner at negative nine decibels and music at negative nine decibels are two entirely different things. It was too loud. I set the limiter higher, uh, lower on the music. So even if I crank the music all the way up now, it shouldn't be that loud again. I did see that and you were, you were totally right. It was too loud. Uh, I'm checking on the order for the panel for the VZ or the, the 2.4, the Trident, uh, now Monday. Yeah. The electronics panel for that will be in Monday along with the acrylic top. Ah, you watch, you started watching that on the, uh, on the plane. What do you, uh, what do y'all, what are you in the tech tech potato in? I'm assuming you're with the potato. Uh, what are you in San Francisco for Dom? <laughs> we're over headphones 90%. Uh, sorry. Headphone warning. Yeah. Damn, that's hot. What is the workbench top? It's a butcher block top. Uh, ah, GTC. Uh, it is, it's a butcher block top that I stained and routered and finished myself. Um, it's just like Lowe's $200 butcher block top like it's meant for kitchen count kitchen counters but i use them for workbenches and i like them my desk that my computer editing computer's at is on one and then this one is on a butcher block as well all right let's dive into this i'm trying to remember where i was at when i i dove off here i was working on putting the kirigami bed together i believe uh, i think i'm missing a heat press insert here in this flip on the soldering iron there's the one cable organizer i'm missing a couple in this piece for the ed welcome ed's tech talk welcome uh ed tr welcome i should say okay so this mount i believe goes on the back of the kirigami here for um cable chain. So I need to put a couple of heat press inserts in this. I keep putting off. I've been meaning, I've got a whole kit to put together uh, a VLMP, um, Vector 3Ds, uh, Adams. Cookie Cad's in the house. Welcome. I just can't hear anything because I'm stuck in the mall. Eh, well, welcome anyway. Cookie Cad in the house. Right, a couple heat press inserts in here. Uh, if I can get to a point here where you folks can actually see what I'm doing a little. Are you going stealth burner? Yeah, I'm going to run the mini stealth burner for now on this. I'm building this pretty, uh, pretty much how it comes for the moment. And I will decide if I'm going to change things or put a dragon burner, or play around with some other stuff. I like the way the mini stealth burner looks and I've been pretty happy with its performance. So... 
I very well may stick with it. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, I saw Dom said something about... What did you say, Dom? Uh, I need Kirigami on mine. I might do a belted Z. I was looking at a... Um, what was I talking about? Um, I was looking last night. I've seen a couple people mention G2... Uh, Aaron, you said G2Z on the V0. I've seen a few people mention using G2Z with a belted Z on a... Um, on a V0, but I couldn't find any files for that. I'm really interested. Um, I'm really interested in like what that is about. Because uh, my upcoming is my rebuild overhaul of my original 0 0.1. Uh, Doomcube Discord. Okay, I'm in the Doomcube Discord, so I will, uh, I'll try and check there later. Thank you. Um, yeah. Because I'm curious about that. I was looking at... I started putting together the files for uh, Fridge Beta. I know. I'm so sick and tired of open betas. I'm sorry, design fellow designers out there. Stop doing open betas. Just stop doing open betas. Release your CAD files. It's not open source until you do. Stop it. Clip me if you want to. I don't care. Like, it. we're in open beta for six months on something. We want to make changes to make... like. My, I had to reverse engineer Galileo 2 to work on my 2.4 because I could not install it without making some parts to fit to my specific application, and I had to reverse engineer that because CAD wasn't available. Drives me nuts. No better than early access games, yeah. But yeah, but at least in an early access game, you're not, like, designing parts around it or whatever. I'm getting on a sidetrack. Um... I will look into it because I'm curious about that. I'm, I want to put a fridge door on mine. I haven't really talked about it. My 0 0.2 upgrade on my 0 0.1 is going to become a Pandora's box-esque. I'm not doing like triple, I'm not going all out. It's going to be like a 0 0.2 inside of a Pandora's box frame because I want the taller frame structure, no top hat. Uh, but I was curious about maybe doing G2Z with a belted Z just for something different. Um, so we'll see. M36, okay. This is mostly M36. Uh, you got a Fizek CNC bed mount on your V0. It is rigid AF. Yeah, they are. I, you know, I had a Kirigami on mine, and then when I built that Fizek one, uh... When I built that Fizek one, I saw just how rigid the that CNC bed frame is. It is impressive. Like, it's definitely more rigid than a Kirigami. Absolutely. Uh, Doom Cube's worth it for printer ants. Uh, you know, Discord... Yeah. I, I try to avoid the Discords as much as I can, but there are just times where you need you need to. Like yesterday, I ran into a clipper error after updating my 2.4 last night. Um, apparently, they deprecated Excel to Decel, and it was tripping an error every time I tried to start a print. And I had to update my clicky config to make it work. Uh, clicky macro issue. But I never would have known that unless I went into Discord and asked, Hey, what's this about? And somebody was like, hey, here it is. Thank you. I think it was Maple Leaf Makers that told me uh, what I needed to do. Actually... Okay, so the LDO version of this bed setup, bloop, we get a uh, mount here for a pair of Wagos and a union point for, kind of hard to see, a pair of JST XH plugs for thermistor, and then I guess there's not a, a union for, there, there is an LED from Maple Leaf Makers, the LED front RGB front bed thing. Uh, when is the, uh, when's the next live stream for the Trident going to be, could we start a lot earlier for, um, for Europeans? That's also, that's a good idea. Um, when, when does, I don't know anybody else's stream schedule. I don't really watch streams personally. So if anybody could tell me who streams what on Sundays, I believe Steve streams live. Like he usually does members only today. Um, Christian, welcome. 
he does members only on Saturday, and then Sunday he does a live, right? What's the time? I, I don't remember. My Trident has a stupid bed mesh bug with sensorless uh, homing. If bed mesh is loaded, it fails to home. Clear the bed mesh and all works again. That's a dumb, annoying. Steve streams 6 p.m. UK time. I don't remember what the heck that is. That's five hours ahead, so that's 1 p.m., I believe. My time. Um, I could just look on YouTube. He probably has his... He's much better about, like, pre-scheduling uh, his streams than I am. No, it doesn't look like his is prepped yet. 10 a.m. Pacific. Okay, so that's 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Eastern. So, yeah, maybe I'll try and go uh, live tomorrow morning, then. I'll actually get up at a decent time and do tomorrow morning. Why did you choose CNC parts for the 9mm for the Trident? Um, one, Fabrico had the parts, and they provided them for the build. Two, um, rigidity. I want to push that machine hard. I want to really push that machine pretty hard, so I went pretty much all CNC on it to try and maximize its potential um that's pretty much it so just wanted to do something a departure like my 2.4 is mostly printed as actually it's, it's all printed at the moment aside up from the extrusions and rails obviously um i'm waiting on my sk rat to finish my a0 uh v0 i want to play with an sk rat board it looks like a decent board um what hot end is going is going to use in the Zero or the Trident? The Trident is going to be a test platform. I'm going to put a either a slice mosquito, a Volco Mosk, Volcano Mosquito, or a um, Fetus Dragon UHF in it first. Not 100% which. Uh, must have tools for assembling the frame on the Trident. Squares, I like to use uh, one, two, three blocks. I use them all the time in the studio for all kinds of purposes. Like I'll often use them when I'm putting in heat press inserts to get up off of the, wo the wood so I'm not burning the wood and get it up higher. Um, these are good for helping to square things up. Some machinist squares, you can get a, a set of these one, two, three blocks and machinist squares for like less than 50 bucks on, um, on Amazon. Dragon UHF is nice, handling 45 millimeters cubed so far. Haven't maxed it out just yet. All right, that's it. That's decent. Uh, that's pretty good. My, the hot end I just put in my 2.4, I can push like 40 now, and I'm pretty happy there. Um, and yeah. Um, so yeah, standard hex wrenches and squares are really all you need to put together a Trident frame. That's it. Um, ball hex is going to make your life easier. It's not a requirement for that frame, but it will make your life easier. Have I thought about a, a K3? I've thought about it. Um, uh, but I have no intention of building one right now, just because time. I've got so many things planned out right now, but like, I, I'm not even looking that far out as to whether or not I could build one. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Okay. That goes in with one and three by six. So this piece, it's funny, they didn't say to put a heat press insert in this, but it clearly needs one. Required a lot of patience. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of patience. That any V, any Vora, any printer build, patience is a prerequisite. And honestly, just take your time. It's not that difficult. Uh, like the new background better than the old one gives a much cleaner vibe me too i feel like it's so much more spacious and open i feel more comfortable now with it like this there's a big change probably coming to it soon might be the next video i'm not 100 percent. a part showed up this morning for it uh, a big part of it so we'll be we'll be seeing it'll be changing a little bit more yet but for the better thank you now, if I could just actually keep it clean. Now that I'm, I'm building these machines, the, the bench top is all covered in printer parts right now. So get through these builds and then it'll, uh, it'll clean up a bit. 
All right, this goes the cable management piece that goes on the side of the bed here, or the Kirigami. There, goes there. And a M3 by six in the bottom. Um, did I hear anything back from Drop Effect? Yes, I did. Um, I am currently running the Drop Effect Next G in my 2.4. And I'm getting 40 millimeters cubed out of it all day long, and I'm quite happy with that. But it is only with a version of it that you folks can't buy, unfortunately. I mean, you'll get the same flow rate out of the, the Dragon version of it, um, but it, the Dragon version won't fit in my 2.4. Uh, I heard from Max, the owner of Drop Effect, um, or now CEO, I don't know where he falls on that. Uh, the reason that they didn't release the square frame was heat creep issues. They were running into heat creep issues. And that's something I absolutely didn't test before I asked them and complained that they weren't releasing the square frame version. Um, it was running into a lot of heat creep issues in their beta testing. Uh, so that was one problem they ran into. The other... Well, no, that was the biggest problem they ran into. Uh, and also now... It has that flat heater. The original beta unit... The original beta unit did not have the flat heater. It had a circular ceramic heater. Uh, I put the, the release version of the heater in my 2.4 with the beta frame. But I might consider swapping to this one and giving it a try to see if it's any different, better, whatever. Um, anyway, they had heat creep issues, so... Now, I haven't gotten word back from him yet, though, because I've had zero issues with it in my machine. He said with the with the Dragon Frame, they had no problems. Um, with the Dragon Frame, they had no problems with heat creep. With the Square Frame, they had problems with heat creep. So they just went with the Dragon Frame and called it done, because it was they're going to have to re-engineer it a bit to make it work with the Square Frame, and they just decided to go with this. What's the difference between that and a Rapido? That's kind of part of the problem. That's what I said about the Dragon. A lot of folks have asked me about the Dragon Frame version, where they're like, okay, why would I buy that over any other Dragon option? And that's really hard for me to answer. Uh, is the Neck G uh, leak proof? Uh, yes, no, not necessarily. The heat break threads into the heater block and uh, so you could theoretically have that loose and it could leak there uh but it shouldn't um that's you'd almost have to be trying i feel like to do that because i don't know that it would assemble correctly if you didn't have it fully assembled properly in fact no it wouldn't because the heat break locks on the kinematic plate so you would know if you didn't have it tight uh it would it would be pretty obvious Anyway, I think a large part of the problem, um, I think a lot, of the, a lot of the problem is the square frame had this. This is the fan that came with the square frame. It is a 20 by 20 by 10 millimeter fan. So I'm like, yeah, of course it heat creeped. It had a 20 millimeter fan on it. Um, it doesn't need hot tightening, no. You can't get to it too hot and tighten it. Um, yeah, it had a 20 millimeter fan on it. So currently the square frame is running in my 2.4 with a 40 millimeter fan blowing through it. So I also only really run ASA and ABS through that machine. Like it's printing right now. So, you know, that that's a lot more tolerable of heat creep. I find, um, is it five volt or 24 volt? It's 24 volt, 20 millimeter fan. So whatever. Um, that's where it's at. I unfortunately have one of the only square frame beta units out there. The thing about the square frame is, and, and the dragon frame, the dragon frame is really compact. Like, you gotta figure, like, if I compare, oh yeah, if I compare here, this, it's a little hard to see, but this is a Rapido. This is a, a Rapido V1. So this is the original Rapido inside of my stealth burner housing. And this is a dragon frame. UHF, so it's got the UHF 
uh, adapter, like the extension on there with a regular RepRap V6 nozzle. So it's, the Dragon Frame version is like ever so slightly longer than a Rapido, but that's still really compact because the Rapido doesn't have the UHF adapter in it. So my, my Rapido on my 2.4, I was stuck at like 30 millimeters usable uh, flow. Um, so I was running, like, I, I maxed out at like 30 millimeters cubic, uh, on the Rapido with the Dragon, no, with the next G, I'm at 40. Um, so this is a higher flowing hot end in a similar package to the original Rapido. But the square frame is over a millimeter shorter than this one. The square frame is a millimeter shorter and because of the shape of the heat sink on the square frame, it's got like chamfers on the top. I was able to fit the square frame with the UHF adapter in it to get that full 40 millimeters cubed into the standard stealth burner housing. I made my own stealth burner housing that's in there, but I can't really release the design because nobody can get that frame or that product, unfortunately. So. <clears throat> Smaller fans are better for cooling heat breaks, but that one may be underpowered. Ah, uh, I don't know how much I, uh, no matter what, you can't beat airflow. You need airflow. Yes, maybe a smaller fan might be a little more focused, but airflow is airflow. Zoll uses a 2510, it's five millimeters more. And also it's not an enclosed housing in the same way. I don't know. Uh, so far I'm having good results. I might end up swapping that hot end into my zero, into my V zero and trying it with a 30 mil, or the, uh, it's a 35 millimeter, isn't it? On the 0 0.2, I forget. No replacement for displacement, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, uh, I think our Kirigami is pretty assembled off the machine. Now it's time to put it on. Pretty assembled off the machine, time to put it on. Make sure everything's good and tight before I put it in here. Oh, uh, yes. All right. Now, M2 by four screws. Never had heat creep issues with 25 by 10 on a dragon hot ends, but can't say the same with a 4010 or 3010. Yeah, but the, I, I believe you. Um, but there's also some awfully weak 4010s and 3010s out there. Uh, like I had a major heat creep issue with a 3010 on my V0.1 originally because I just under spec the fan really bad. Um, only had heat creep issues with SB and printing PLA on Revo. And that's part of where, like I, my last email that I met message to Drop Effect was, were those people printing PLA or were they printing higher temp materials? Like I'm printing ASA, which is absolutely more forgiving of hot Lotus, welcome. Uh, I'm printing ABS and ASA, which is way more forgiving of heat creep than PLA is. So, like, I could see saying uh, the design of the Next G hot end with its kinematic hot end design, uh, which allows for thermal expansion of the the heater block and everything, really feels like it was always intended for engineering type materials, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, it's one of those like, okay, it didn't work with PLA. Well, it's not really meant for PLA, but then people are going to buy it, use it with PLA and have issues. So, eh. It's like when somebody builds a V0, uh, have I used preloaded rails? Uh, I only use preloaded rails. I do not use zero preload rails. I only use rails generally with a Z1 preload, personally. I find that to be the sweet spot. Ah! Just finished printing a shroud for your GTX 1050. Huh. That's fun. You know, I've never messed with something silly like that. 
I mean, you got to do what you got to do to make your shit work, but... Uh, do you have anything that can print peak? I wouldn't print peak on anything I currently have. Nope. Nothing I have goes hot enough. Theoretically, my uh, 2.4 hot end can go hot enough. But the bed's limited with... I think I have a 120 uh, bed fuse on that. And it's not insulated. I wouldn't do that. Do I still use the Merc 1? Um, I like using the Merc 1. It's down at the moment due to firmware issues. Um, so I use it on bigger projects especially, but I just haven't had time to fix it lately. And electronics become an issue at that temp. Yeah, a lot of things become an issue at that temp. I don't have any heated enclosures. None of my machines have heated enclosures currently. Uh, the only one I did have was the Chidi X-Max. Um, but I sold that. Got rid of it. Um, my next 2.4 build, I am going to be insulating and... Uh, my next 2.4 build, I will be insulating and heating, but I'm not to, not to peak levels. I just want that to be like a reliable nylon and... Uh, polycarbonate printer more so uh, more so you'd be using it for uh, abs and asa just to be nice and strong why'd you sell a cheaty can't keep everything not enough space to keep everything and i knew i was going to be building the heated chamber 2.4 so um since i knew i was going to be building that anyway it kind of gave me the kick in the butt to kind of gave me the kick in butt to to get moving forward on that build you can get some cheap 20 millimeter thick rigid insulation. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm, uh, I'm, so my next 2.4 build is gonna be in a Doom Cube frame, so 40 40 extrusions. So it's gonna have 20 millimeters of rigid insulation all the way around, except for the door, obviously. But I'm gonna do a click clack, yeah, I'm gonna do an extrusion door uh, on it with double panes of, of polycarbonate, probably. Um, so, so it won't be insulated, but it'll be insulated. Hell yeah, I want to see more Doom Cube content. It's going to be Doom Cube frame, but everything else is my own. I'm not using, I'm pretty much using nothing from a Doom Cube other than the extrusions. Um, so it'll be coming. I'm waiting on, the problem is I really want to find... Um, I really want to find some 350 millimeter Doom Cube extrusions because I'm only building a 300 uh, 2.4. It's going to be a 300, but I wanted. Um, I'm not doing the Masumi extrusions. I'm doing the LDO extrusions. So the rounded LDO ones. They're like the Masumi ones, but instead of having uh, an angle that goes around the 2020, they're a full 40 40 rounded. The problem is I want to find some uh, vacuum pump and, and actually vacuum seal the door. Interesting idea. Um, God, that's going in a little crooked. Hey, that print just finished. Um, what was I going to say? I want 40 or I want 350 millimeter LDO corner extrusions, but they're out of stock everywhere right now. And that's part of why I didn't start on that build yet. I really wanted to get that done, but I can't find those right now. Um, and I want those because I don't want to limit my Z-axis build height with a CPAP cooler and a heated chamber. I'm going to be mounting, I think I'm going to be mount, since it's a, a 2.4, there's really nowhere to put the heater other than in the very top of the chamber. But I don't want the heater to be like right next to the CPAP hose or something like that. So I am I want to build it taller than a 300 build would be to give me some headroom at the top for to put the heater and other stuff in there. And then probably still build a hat on top of that. And also to, to not limit my Z-axis build height. So... But if anybody knows where I can get 350 LDO Doom Cube extrusions, let me know. I'm shaky as hell today. It's almost like I consume a lot of caffeine and didn't sleep enough last night. Ah.
Um, the amount of your streaming this week makes me feel bad that I've got so so many unfinished 3D printer builds. Well, that's why I'm streaming so much this week because I'm I have so many unfinished 3D printer builds that I was like I've got to force myself, so I'm going to stream a whole bunch. Um, could you recommend any more mods than the ones already included in the kit? I'm looking to buying a kit, but also want to mod it. Uh, is there a filament runout sensor on this machine? Are we talking about the zero here? The zero build? The 0.2 R1 kit does have a runout sensor. It's just a basic switch. Uh, uh, just a, just a, uh, wow, error. It goes into one of the feet. It's just a micro switch. That's what I mean. It's just a micro switch that goes into one of the feet. And, ooh. All right, I'm going to max you out to the top. Trying to get this squared up. Tighten this. And, um, yeah. Yeah, it's in one of the feet. One of the feet has a, the Bowden tube passes through the foot and there's a runout sensor in there. So that comes with the R1 kit. Um, the R1 kit comes with the runout sensor switch. You don't really need one of the V0. I mean, yeah, you're running awfully small prints, but if you're using up the spool, like, Personally, my 0.1 on my desk, I just leave it sitting there with a spool of black ASA loaded up all the time. Because like 90% of what I want to print on it is an ASA, um, is ASA, uh, like little brackets and stuff. So I just leave it loaded up with a spool of black ASA. And the nice thing about that is if I had a sensor, I can just run that spool till it's gone put on the next one and do it again. I don't currently have a sensor on it. Uh, where did I just drop that screw? So, um, I don't think anything I have right now, any of the machines I've built has a runout sensor at this moment. So I've got to fix that. I got to fix that. Yeah. Uh, Maple Leaf Makers does have a back panel and actually what I just printed is a piece for this build that is a Maple Leaf Makers back panel. Um, Maple Leaf Makers back panel is what I just printed for this. Though it's my remix of their design. So. Is that square? I don't know if that doesn't feel like it's very. It's good and free, but it's not like. Nah, it is. Okay, it just needed a second of a. Uh, that's a good sign. If your bed does that, you're good. Uh, next live on the Trident will probably be tomorrow morning. I think we'll probably, tomorrow morning for Europeans, we'll try and uh, get on a little earlier. Maybe like 8, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which should be what? Uh, for England, that would be error. To 3 p.m. 3 p.m. You, uh, 3 p.m. GMT, I believe. So, yeah, we'll try and do that. We'll go live tomorrow morning. I'll probably put the bed in it. I think we'll put the bed in and maybe build the Zoll, the tool head. Maybe we'll build the tool head and, uh, and then I'm kind of on hold. Once I have those parts done, I'm on hold until the, um, yeah. Um, perfect timing for the folks in the UK. Yeah, but I want to get, I know there's some Germans and some others from across Europe who want to get in too. So, but yeah, I think tomorrow morning we'll try and do it. Um, 5 a.m. Pacific standard. Yeah. I'm always, you know, uh, folks ask and it's, it's, it's nice to, to try and cater to different groups at different times. You know, most of the time it makes sense for me to, to do like evenings on the weekdays which is not good for europeans so printed the deck panels on electronics panel on my zero scaled them up a slight bit to have a tighter fit and made the whole mounts i uh, made it with the whole mount instead of ehb yeah my uh finland welcome maddie you're here again so yeah tomorrow morning will be my time tomorrow morning will be live um my back panel for my zero point to upgrade it has all the mounts built in no no vhb that's hot that's hot
hot, hot. Hot off the presses. Like so you can get monetized. Thank you. Like and subscribe if you're not already to Mandic Labs. Ah. Uh, yeah, where's that here? All right. So, bed's on. Uh, bed heater and thermistor lead connections. All right, time to put the bed on. Build plate. Springs. Thermistor. And the actual bed. So it's the, the LDO bloop, PCB bed. So it's got a, what, a 100 watt PCB heater on it, I believe these are. Something like that. 80 watt. Uh, it's 4,000 hours watch time for monetization. Um, I did cross 4,000 hours after the last stream. So thank you very much, folks. We're over 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours watch time. So we should get monetized on this channel soon. Ish. Whenever YouTube decides that it's, it's time, you know, they don't, they don't send it out automatically when you hit that number. So thank you very much to everybody who has been watching this week. Uh, pushing through has made a big difference it seems. So thank you. You're making me want to build a 0 0.2, even though I definitely don't need it. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of there with you. So like I have my zero, I don't need another 0 0.2, but I just love these things. Bed would be perfect on a trident. Um, sure. All right. I'm going to put a spot of thermal compound, I think, under this just to, like, help it. I don't know where all my thermal compound is. Here's some slice. Well, that's what I was looking for, to slice, but there's an open one. This is not open. Anyone watch, Ar yeah, anybody watch uh, Joel or uh, Uncle Jesse's Orange Storm Giga streams? I haven't had a chance. I haven't had a chance. I've talked to them. I talked to both of them. They've both been having so much fun. <laughs> Put a dab of thermal compound on here. Four beds for a baby phoenix build. Uh, you know, I'm waiting to see somebody scale a phoenix down. All right, let's get this in here. I like that the thermistor location is in the dead middle of the bed. I mean, they often are on types like this, but... I don't know. I like that. little wrench give it a tighten anyone else looking at the ender 3 ng project uh rh3d the designer of the ender 3 ng has been in stream a couple times this week on here uh i'm intending to build one whenever the next update comes he uh, rh3d is updating the design um and whenever the next update comes i'll probably get around to building one all right thermistor in now, there's a NeoPixel cable for the bed. Oh, right, I gotta put the front, the bed front on. Bed front. I think it's M3 by sixes and a couple of nuts. Can't wait for videos on the N NG. Awesome. Yeah, if you check if you check the uh, printables listing, it does say that it's under beta and that there's an update coming. Um, so they're working on it. They were in here on in on stream the other night and, and working on it while while in here. I know. All right. All right. My nut just fell out. 
It's not a phrase you want to say. Am I only, uh, am I the only one that doesn't have RGB on their things? I mean, it's me. I have to have RGB on things. I actually don't use the RGB on my machines much, though. Uh, I have an Ender 3 V2. I'd be interested at some point if it can be built enclosed. Yeah, it's built to be enclosed. Um, yeah, the Ender 3 NG is built to be enclosed. It's meant to be. So, what do you think about Micron? Um, I love Micron and a bunch of the other little printer for ants machines. My thing about Micron and all the other, most of the other printer, most of the, Dom, thanks for being here. Talk to you soon. Um, my problem with them is just expense. Like, I would love to build a printer for Ant Machine, but most of them cost as much to build as a big Trident or a 2.4, because you've got to go out the same amount of motors, the same amount of the bigger control board and the electronics to support all that. Like. The big expense isn't the extrusions, it's the electronics and the motors and those parts. So, like, you end up spending almost as much to build a Micron as you would to build a Trident. And I'm just like, eh, I'm just going to build a Trident. I really wanted to build one at one point, but I just I couldn't bring myself to do it. Alright, bed, 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 bed. Uh, I gotta get the wiring on here. How is this supposed to route? Alright. Z cables. Uh, question for the hive mind. Is it worth building a stealth burner uh, for an Ender 3? Okay, unpopular opinion time. Don't put stealth burners on things. Like, I don't, I don't understand it. I know they're beautiful. They are great looking hot end setups, like tool heads. They're not, they're not, um, they don't have great airflow. Um, they aren't meant for PLA printing. So something like, if you're gonna be printing PLA, even PETG on a regular basis, a, a stealth burner is not a good tool head for it. Um, it's got a good look, but like there's so many better options for a uh, an Ender 3 tool head that might not look as cool, but will perform better and be lighter and just all around better options, in my opinion. I like the Stealth Burner on a Voron. Like, my 2.4, I run a Stealth Burner. It prints mostly ABS and ASA, so the part cooling doesn't need to be very good. Uh, and that's what it was designed around. So, like, even Dragon, Dragon Burner would be a good option. I mean, honestly, my favorite on the Ender 3 is the... What's it, what's it called? I'm blanking. God, what's the Ender 3 tool head that everybody uses? It's all configurable. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I was reaching to build a Micron and just couldn't reach it high enough for the Trident. Uh, Hero Me. That's what I'm thinking of. Hero Me. Hero Me Gen 6, or I think it's on Gen 7 now. Uh, Yeah, I like I really like Hero Me. That's what I run on my original Ender 3. I have a Hero Me with a, a Revo CR in it, a pair of 15 uh, 5015 part cooling fans. It's great. Um It's so big and bulky. It's not actually like the stealth burner is big and bulky. Like This is a stealth burner tool head. Like stealth burner is big. Um Compared to a Hero Me, a Hero Me might be a little wider, but you're going to get significantly better part cooling out of a Hero Me than you would out of a Stealth Burner. If you if you're not worried about printing things that need a lot of part cooling, this one is CPAP, yes. If you're not worried about needing part cooling um and you just really like the look of it, then yeah, go for it. Have a Setsana duct on mine. Yeah, I I tweaked a Setsana. I remixed it at one point cuz that had some issues. And it's part cooling, in my opinion, too. But, yeah. Um, Pi, Pi 2W was on sale at Micro Center. Is that what I saw somebody mentioning? That's. I think I'm going to run a Pi 2W in this. I think, I think. That's what I run in my 0 0.1 right now. 
I believe I'm going to go that way on this one. Okay, cables. Bed heat. Bed heat. Mm. Is one of these longer than the other one? No, they're the same. Uh, I'm like you. Yeah. If, if you're printing ABS and ASA or things like that, then it totally makes sense to have something that doesn't necessarily have the best part cooling. It's fine. If you're really pushing speed, it does matter, but... Uh, I did print parts so they matched. I tried pretty hard. I actually printed... I printed at least two machines worth of filament... Or, or of parts for this build. Um, specifically... I'm, I'm printing... I printed almost two machines worth of parts for this. Specifically to get things how I wanted finish wise and whatever um like transitions and all all right connector and a bed so we got the wago connector underneath it here this breakout little board mount thing here uh for thermistor and wagos for our bed heater Um, question about the first layer quality if it's almost perfect but some parts show signs of the nozzle too close is it uneven bed or could it be something else the likeliest answer is uneven bed that is your likeliest answer but it's not the only answer your motion system can be uneven too like if your if your gantry that your x-axis your tool head is riding back and forth on is bowed your your you might be tight at the edges and loose in the middle you might be tight in the middle loose in the, depending on how it's bowed or bent if you've got a really weird one that's bent at one end it could it could also it's potential that that shit can happen uh do you vapor smooth asa parts not often i have from time to time i actually don't really vapor smooth them i've been meaning to build like a, a little box to vapor smooth things in uh, I usually just smooth it by, I soak a rag in acetone, and then I gently wipe the part down, and then kind of blow it off. That's what I've done. Um, yeah. Are there any mods for ABL on a 0 0.2? Yes. Um, there's, there is a clicky and a Euclid version for, for running on 0 0.2, but I don't know. I don't, I don't really see any reason for it. You got 120 by 120 bed. If it's off by, if it's off that it needs mesh... I don't know. For me, I don't I don't see any particular reason to do it. I think you also lose just a little bit of build volume doing it because it's not really designed for the tool head to go off of the bed much to like stow a probe and pick it back up. Yeah. All right, where were we at? Uh, thermistor, heater wires. Okay, so these want to snake back this away Bloop. I'm gonna snake these back so they can get to where the chain will be uh, looks like they get zip tied in here uh, using easy ABL on a dragon burner on yours all right yeah if you're not losing build volume and it, you can fit it sure uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Zip ties. Zippy ties. Get this through here so I can zip tie these cables in place. Only just enough so that they are in place, but not so tight that I can't service anything. You go this way. A 
Acquiring a Prusa Mini made me want a V0 more than uh, more than before. I mean, once you have a small printer and you see how much you can actually still do with a small printer, I totally get that. You know, I I always wanted I wanted a V0, but I was always like, ah, how much am I going to use it? We'll find out. I use it so much more than I thought I would. I made that whole video, small printers are pointless, just to talk about that fact that, like, you can do a lot with a small printer. All right. That's zip tied in place. These snips. Which V0 kit is the best? I don't have an answer for that yet. This is my first time building a LDO one. Um, this is my first time building an LDO one, but I'm definitely seeing some things I like about the LDO one currently. So, uh, the Fizect was an okay budget option for a, a V0 kit, in my opinion. Paul, or uh, sorry. My dyslexia kicked in and I read Pedro Lamas as, as Paul. Sorry. Um, Pedro, welcome. Okay. All right, now I need the RGB cable to the bed. Where is it? Here it is. RGB. RGB. Happy with the Seaboard kit. Yeah. I haven't built a form bot either. Nope, no experience with form bot. I've built Fizect, I've done self sourced, I've done Seabor, I've done Fizect. Did I say that twice? And I built a couple of Seabors. Um, I think that's it. They've improved much over the years. I mean, I've seen that they absolutely take criticism to heart and make changes. I mean, part of my problem with them was just. Like, I just ran into the same problems more than once on the Seaboard kit. And I was like, cool. Like, you are trying to fix things, but you also ran into the same problems again. That shouldn't be happening. You installed a servo nozzle wiper on your V0. That's interesting. I, uh, I could probably use one. There's like a permanently burned spot in the corner of the bed on my machine. On my 0 0.1. Uh, followed the advice I gave you at Smurf and you're building a LDO Trident. Awesome. Do you ever source parts individually? Yes. My original 0 0.1, my green one that I, I, I've shown many times, my original 0 0.1 and my 2.4 are both self-sourced. I entirely self-sourced those you know, bought bits and pieces here, there. The only things I did was like maybe buy a hardware kit and like a motion kit. So, you know, the pulleys and, and belts came together or something like that. But I self-sourced that whole build and I do not recommend it. I don't recommend self-sourcing. Um, you spend a lot more time getting everything together. You'll almost certainly get to a point in the build where you forgot something. Um, you know, no matter best laid plans, unless you're like way more organized than me and you do a whole spreadsheet and check things off one by one. And even then, you never know. Because like if you order a hardware kit, it might be short of one size of screw and you might not realize it. Um, or might have been for like a different revision of the machine you're building and you didn't realize that. Or that did happen to me. Self-sourcing my 2.4, I started getting all the pieces together for that. And then I didn't get to building it for a few months. And then the 2.4 R2 released. Well, now things are different. So then I had to then buy more parts again to up. Cause I was like, well, if I'm going to build it, I'm not going to build the last revision. I might as well build the current revision. So then I ended up having to source more parts. Granted that would have happened if you bought a kit in that interim too, probably, but yeah. Um, so anyway, between shipping, tax, and all of that, I personally find you you end up spending more. My machines cost me more than they would have if I bought LDO kits. 
Uh, what's a good tool head option for the Voron 2.4 build that will only print 8 PLA? Honestly, um, I mean, there's a handful of options. Zal, the, look at the armchair engineering stuff. Armchair engineering with like the Mjolnir t tool head and they used to have the Mantis with the 15, 15s, but they don't do that anymore, I don't think. I think that became Zal. Armchair engineering has a handful of different tool heads for Vorons that have much better part cooling. If you're going to be printing PLA with a Voron most of the time, run it without panels and get one of those tool heads with better part cooling. Um, or if you once in a while will print ABS or ASA, there's also um, quick release panels. Like the, I think it was the Annex engineering team that put together. Um, they have 5015 option still. All right. There's the quick release panel kit or like printed parts. So you could do quick release printed parts on, or pr panels on a Voron 2.4. So when you're printing like I am right now, printing ABS, put the panels on. And then when you're gonna print PLA, take them off. Chamber temperature is gonna affect things as much as part cooling. So, or at least a fair bit. Do all your printers run Clipper? I've never used it and I'm looking into Ender 3NG. I think the Ender 3NG is kind of set up for Marlin currently. Um, yeah, every, a lot of people like the Annex Clips. Uh, I've never used them, but a lot of people like them, so. Um, where was I headed with that? Uh, Ender 3 NG. I'm pretty sure Ender 3 NG is intended for Marlin uh, base. And most of my machines run Clipper, yes, these days. I didn't eat enough for stream. Oops. Do you flavor your popcorn? Yeah. Uh, nutritional yeast. I put nutritional yeast on it. It's delicious. Okay. That's in there. Time to put the bed in. This is going slow. All right. Bed is here. Do I want the question is, do I want the, um, where's the manual? Do I want the, oh no, I accidentally closed the manual. I really like the Sherpa mini extruder. Yeah, I, I've been fairly happy with the Sherpa mini. Um, Where's I at here? What size screws did the bed need on the Kirigami? I don't think it says here. Wagos, Wagos. Do not use M2 by eight. No. M2 by six, where the heck? Right, let's go to the Kirigami bed. I had insulated panels on my 2.4 with a 105 bed and doors closed at 65 in there. That's cool. Don't even bother taking the panels off because it's 33 with it open. All right, cool. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. What size screws do I need for the bed? I love LDO, but their build notes are like split up between a half dozen places, it feels like, and it's not the most user friendly in that regard. All right, I'm gonna move forward without putting the bed in for right. Did I put this on upside? God damn it. No, I didn't. I'm looking at it upside down. <laughs> I'm looking at the bed and I'm like, oh, damn it, I put it together upside down. But it's because I'm just looking at it upside down. This is right side up, which is correct. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I'm going to hold off putting on the bed just yet. I want to keep like adding weight and mess to this while I'm working here. All right, time for some more extrusions.
This is silly. I've built enough of these by now. I should know to do this, like, off the top of my head, I feel like. All right. You go on. Uh, yees come off. Yees. Yees. These. There's the... All right. Make sure these are tight first before I pull off the sides. Yeah, those could stand a little tight. Cool. I think I need to remove this end stop or this uh, stopper to give this a quick tighten. Yeah. I want to make sure everything's good and tight before I take off the side extrusions that are just helping to line things up currently. time now. Oh, One of these days these some of these companies will send these kits with a torque wrench. Mm, maybe. I've got a torque screwdriver I could be using but I don't think I have long enough bits to get down into these. That'd be really... I feel like that'd be pushing the uh, the expense on a kit like this. You know, if you're selling a $600 kit and a, with a even $50 torque wrenches, torque screwdriver really, what you need for this, would be a bit of a deal breaker for some. All right. I'm so, so, so glad that they made the Z end stop switch double shear. The original 0.2, it was when the 0.2 first launched, it was only single shear and it was not good enough. It was not good enough. It needed to be double shear. I'm so glad they did it. Zyrus, welcome. Maple Leaf Maker in the house. Welcome. I just printed a part that's off of a remix of yours. A remix I made off of one of yours. I'm going to need a full recap. Um, we're building a V0. Welcome. <laughs> we're, we're building a V0. I talked crap on open betas. Our, uh, closed or beta releases of designs. And how much I dislike them. And uh, the drop effect next G. I really like the hot end. Too bad they're not going to release it the way I'd like. There is a nice mod that has a cover for the Z motor. Yeah, I keep meaning to do that. Uh, one thing I'll say for this Cookie Cad ABS that I'm using on this print is after it sat for a couple of months in the studio, it became quite stringy. I did not have that problem fresh out of the box. Like when I first printed the parts for this, printed beautifully, no problems. Um, but it's definitely stringy today, now that I revisited it, like, two months later. Get rid of a little, uh, little stringing on here. It's a little thin to be doing that with. As I watch it warp in my hand a little bit, it's fine. Uh, can you release your Mercury One files? I will be. I, they just need cleanup work, and that's really time-consuming. It's the last 10% of releasing files that is the hard part. Um, so I will be releasing them. I've just got to make time to do so. So, Is the Ender 3 NG running Clipper firmware? I believe it's Marlin. I don't believe it runs uh, Clipper currently. I'm not sure, though. Because I, I, I believe it's set up for Marlin. Um... So I printed one of these this morning. This is a back panel uh, for the Voron Zero. It's from Maple Leaf Maker, but I remixed it. So uh, it has the pass-through point for the uh, Bowden tube with a micro switch mount for a filament runout sensor. I changed the angle on that for my own personal taste. And then I also put the hex pattern on it because I put hexes on everything. Hexagons are bessagons. Mandic really URBI, yeah. And yeah, 
So, and then I, I also made it multi-body so I could print it with a couple of the colored hexes too. So, you'll see that through the in front. Yeah. On my, my current V0, there's another panel. There's a back panel that goes with this that has hexes and airflow and everything. Um, I might release this at some point. I got to clean up the files yet again. So, we'll see. Not 100% sure. Bah. Love your designs. Thank you. Uh, Godler latch wanting to pop open. I've I've had that happen before, but not often. I uh, my last Godler latch setup worked beautifully. That hex panel on Thangs, not yet. I might release it. Uh, well, you can find the non-hex version of this panel. The non-hex version of this panel is from Maple Leaf Makers on their printables, I believe, and their GitHub, I think. Uh, they can maybe chime in and let folks know. Um, so the non-hex version of this, I just remixed the angle and put hexes on it. So, But I might release that on Thangs. Uh, my hex panel that we are going to be running... My back hex panel is on my Thangs page, but you folks might know that already. So, yeah, the original one is yeah Maple Leaf Makers. Their printables page is where the original one is. You'll find. So where it's I like I much much prefer the Bowden tube coming through above the extrusion like that in the back. It's so much better than going up and through the electronics box. Such a good idea. The URBI, I believe you call this, right? DFH has Doom Cube extrusions in black. Yeah, but they are... I think DFH doesn't have the LDO ones. They have the ones, the Masumi ones that go around the corner. No, I never managed to rotate the screen on my um, Mercury One. Never got it to work. Here's what I found. Stop. Sounds like Herbie without the H. Herbie. Okay. All right. Extrusion. Extrusion. Get these out of my way. Throw this away. What filament brands do I like the most? Personally, I mostly use... I like the fun colors of Cookie Cad, um, and it prints well too. I like primarily Polymakers, almost exclusively what I use. By choice, I like Polymaker filament. Um, I, I have for quite some time. They are now a filament sponsor for the channel, uh, channels. So they currently now do provide, they didn't up until this year, but they now provide filament for my projects. So thank you to them. Um, but yeah, I really like Polymaker. I really like Cookie Cad. I use Inland brand from, um, Micro Center. I'll use their house brand Inland sometimes. I have a Micro Center not too far from here, but it's convenient for me to get there. All right. These extrusions go on the bottom. Polyterra PLA. Yeah, that's, that's what I used to use the most. Now I use Poly... Polylite ASA mostly. It's my number one filament I use at this point is Polylite ASA. Uh, but Polyterra, like this over here, this whole rack above my head to the left is Polylite PLA. And then from right directly behind my head, that way is almost all Polylite ASA. Horrible issues with Polymaker PETG. For PETG, I use um, GreenGate 3D. I really like GreenGate 3D PETG. I've never tried Polymaker's PETG. Um, I've never used their PETG. I stopped printing PETG for the most part, so. Commenting weren't caught up. That happens a lot on stream. People don't don't catch the the current live where we're at, whatever. Welcome to now. All right. 
That goes there. God, all these wires are annoying. I should have done this before. These wires are annoying. Isn't Inland the same filament as Polymaker? It varies. I'm, I don't have an official answer on that. I know their ASA is is. Um, I know Inland brand ASA is just Polymaker ASA, but I think their PLA varies. I think it. I've heard some people say Eson. I've heard some people say. I forget what other brand Overture. I, I think I've heard Overture too. Who knows? It's white label, and that's one of the problems with it. Is they can ch because it's white label, they can change it at any time. I ran into an issue with that once, where one design I was printing and selling, I was offering a color, and people loved the color. It was, let me grab it. It was my Switch Joy-Con uh, can cup. So you put your Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons on the side of it, and then your can goes in the middle of it. I sold a, a big run of these like Christmas a couple years ago or something. Um, and this color is Inland brand green silk PLA. I sold a couple dozen of these cups and I ran out. I had a handful of spools, ran out of the filament, went to Micro Center to stock up, bought the same silk green PLA, totally different color. Because it's white label, they can change at any time. And that's a danger you run into when you're not buying from a manufacturer, like direct from a filament brand. You're buying from a, uh, it's just the way it goes. Um, so, and they never got back this color again. So, unfortunately, I think I ended up going to, I think I went to like Poly Maker, Poly, um, Poly Maker's Poly Terra Silk, um, which are Poly Light Silk, which was a different green, but it was better than the one that Micro Center had. A Micro Center one was like aqua after they changed the color. It, it turned to this like aqua green. It was kind of terrible. All right. All right, we're building up a, a little V0 here. I love this stage of the V0. It looks like a little robot. It's like a little transformer at this point when it's just got the uh, the rails and the extrusion sticking forward. Makes me think of like a mech. Like you'd sit in the middle of it and pew, 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 pew. pew. Here's your guns. Uh, my go-to PLA is Printed Solid Jesse. Uh, I like Jesse. Uh, I like the folks at Printed Solid. Green Gate 3D, PETG, Matter Hackers for TPU. All right, that's interesting. Makes me think of the Prusa XL. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Um, yeah, I used to print uh, Jesse. I don't know. I, I always found, like, it's good. It's just never for me. Uh, like, Jesse has a weird smell to it that I never really jived with. I didn't like it, the way it smelled. And, um, and it was always a little difficult for me to tune in. Like, I feel like... Jesse PLA flows really well. So you've got to like really dial in your extrusion multiplier to dial in Jesse PLA. And I think when I was using Jesse, I just didn't do that as much. I wasn't as diligent about that back then. So I should probably revisit using it. But now Polymaker is a sponsor of the channel. So I don't really have a reason to. <laughs> I've been really wanting to try some of the new a uh, ASA colors from west 3d with their ambrosia line they've got like that galaxy sparkly purple i want to check out and uh they sent me like a spool of red asa i just haven't had a chance to print it because i haven't had any reason to print red asa um yeah ASA or ABS 2.0 from F uh, from Fusion Filaments. Never tried it. Uh, two and a half years ago, I bought some Eson ABS Plus. Now I bought it again, and it's so much worse. Yeah, I've run into that. I mean, that's a big thing for me. Is I have found Polymaker to be very consistent. Um, 
that's the big thing for me is like the the I've had minor color variation on it from time to time, which you you the way filament is made, that's kind of to be expected. Um but at least print parameter wise and like strength of the prints and everything, I've never had any issue with with Polymaker being inconsistent or whatever. Um I've heard some bad things like uh when i reviewed i think the seabor uh 0.2 with the printed parts and they were really bad they told me they were using eson i'm pretty sure and a few people when i mentioned that said that they had bad experiences with eson's abs so i love proto pasta i really love proto pasta it's just so expensive i i quite like proto pasta prints beautifully beautiful colors um just expensive That's expensive. Uh, I think I might be jumping ahead a little bit putting these on here, but. Ba, ba, ba. No? Okay. Yeah, I don't need to drop any any nuts in. I probably missed some nuts at some point here. Aha, uh -huh, I did. I missed. I missed nuts in the bottom rail. All right, I did. Bottom and top. I am jumping ahead too much. I'm talking to you folks, and I'm forgetting my building V zeros. Here we go. I could drop in some of the drop-in nuts, the uh, squares, but I'm not gonna. I'll do it right. I'll do it the way it should be done. Okay. Two M3 nuts in the top. Okay. I forget that the motor mounts changed. It still seems way too few. Go in there. This is stuck. Why are you stuck? Uh, ba, ba, ba. Oh yeah, what's the Pico Billic? Is there a cover for the Pico Billical? I wonder if that needs any hardware. I need to check real quick. It mounts the underside of the extrusion, doesn't it? Pico Billical. Electronics, Pico Billical, frame cover. Did I print the frame cover? I don't think I did. It does mount to the underside though, so I can do that later. And I might, I might remix that. Looking at it, it's got to pass through for the. Uh... It's got to pass through for the Bowden tube that I don't need. Toolhead spacer, toolhead spacer V zero point two. Weird. Anyway. Mm. Good brands for preloaded rails, LDO, um, Highwind. I haven't run it yet, but the Fizek Light Hollow One, Hollow One seems really nice. Um, I've also gotten rails from Fabrico uh, with good results, personally. So Fabrico, Highwind, LDO, probably my go-to recommendations. Even this LDO kit came with a high wind rail for the x-axis. I'm gonna have to revisit the, the Pico Bilical cover and stuff. Okay, uh, now the bottom I need to put some in. I missed, I missed some screws or nuts. I missed my nuts. As happens when you're building a V0. Okay. Remove the uprights, preload two M3 nuts, one in the back.
Okay. Two. Ranch access hole, ranch access hole. Uh, and two in the bottom. Did I put two in the bottom already? No, I didn't put two in the bottom. Two in the bottom. I put two in the front. There we go. Okay. Whoa. The ever-present forgetting M3s. Building every V0, you'll always forget one. Luckily, this comes with the square nuts that you can actually slide in if you do forget one. That's nice of LDO to actually think of you. Okay. If your MCU does not have a 5 volt power supply to your, you're going to need to mount a 5 volt power supply, add an additional nut into the slot. No, I do not need that. I have an SKR Pico, so I don't need that. Okay, now I can put this, this back on here. Nevermore fan replaced and now wired to the clipper expander, so it's not on, always on. And just in case you forgot, here's some knots. Yep. Uh, you adding a clipper expander to this build? I am not. This build's not getting a clipper expander. My 0 0.1 is. Because this has a pico bilical, that frees up a couple of ports on the board. I am going to put a Nevermore in here. And I'm going to um, have a chamber thermistor. But because this has a Pico Bilical, I don't need... Uh, that frees up a, a thermistor port and a fan port, at least one, on the board. So, so I don't need a clipper expander on this. If I wanted... I considered putting auxiliary part cooling on this one, uh, and if I did, then um, then I would need a Pico, or yeah, yeah. not Pico, um, a clipper expander, I think. See you wearing Madness shirts, fave song songs. Ugh. <laughs> What do you think, Gene? Gene has a lot to say on the subject. What do you think? What do you think? Are you, you like baggy, baggy trousers? You like baggy trousers? Yeah, who doesn't? Um, I'm blanking on song names. Baggy trousers. One Step Beyond. Night Boat to Cairo. God, what's that one off the newer album where he's singing about his dad... I love that Madness songs are all stories. That's the biggest thing that I love, personally. Um, I just love that they're all stories. Like, almost every... The, the worst Madness songs are the ones that aren't stories. Um, not a big fan of Our House. I like it, but it's not nearly one of my favorites. And I'm blanking otherwise. Are you helping, Gene? Please don't knock stuff off the bench. Bunk. Gene's here to help. Don't worry, everybody. Wow. 37 millimeters. Make sure this is set to where it needs to be. Could, could you move your butt? You're in my way. Go forward just a hair. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> okay, Gene. I've got it. Our house is overplayed and overhyped. Yep. It is. It's just, you know, that's... But it, it was a hit, so it gets overplayed. Which I understand. It's definitely tonally different than a lot of other Madness songs, so like I understand why it got more mass appeal. Definitely get it, but not for me. It's 
tighten things up a little bit so they're not jiggling all over the place while I'm trying to set this distance on this rail or this uh, extrusion. Uh, let's switch to the OpsBot camera. I haven't been using that enough. Ba -ba -ba. I wonder where it's looking right now. Kind of zoomed in in the middle of nowhere. I think One Step Beyond's got to be my favorite song. Now that I'm thinking a little more. That one, but granted, that one's not really a story. I did say I love Madness songs that are stories, but that's not really. Cool. One down. Tighten this one. Get the cat hair off of it. That's pretty good right where it is. Let me check this corner for square. That's pretty good. Eh. What? You, I know, you were in the way. I'm sorry. Gene wants to come back up. She wants to get back in on this. All right. So those are tight. Now I need to do the other end of this. Uh, flip it over so I can check, make sure the spacing on the bottom is correct. Okay. That is not tight. That's not in the right spot. It's tight. It's not in the right spot. How's everybody's Saturday going? It's gorgeous outside and I'm inside building a machine, but I'm not sure I'd have it any other way personally. Took the doggo out earlier for stream. Pretty good. Let me double check that. I feel like that could be just a hair. Tighten. Cool. Tighten. All right. Back corner. This corner. Eh, it doesn't feel. I don't like that. Super rainy and gloomy. Out of the gloom with tax documents. Oof. I gotta do that this week. That's on my agenda for this week, unfortunately. Setting up a Pi 4 before I start sourcing parts to make my Ender 3S1 Core XZ. Cool. Rainy here too, huh? It's like chilly. It's, it's that perfect, like sunny, you're good in the sun, not in the shade temperature here, which I like personally, but yeah. All right, three by tens. Uh, first year owning a business, so much more crap to take care of. Yep. This is my first year filing as an LLC, so I'm uh I'm gonna be learning a whole new whole new bag this year. You know, I've I run my business as sole proprietorship until this year. So different animal. Different animal. Alright. Uh instructions. All right, these are in. All oh, right, so our Z cable, Z chain. End, our Z chain end, Z chain is here. Mm, doesn't really matter. 
What's in the Pokeball? Uh, the Pokeball is my AirPods. It's my AirPod case. Bloop. Yep. That's my AirPods. Hmm, whatever. Thought BTT might have duckies in there. No, the duckies are all in a box. The duckies are in the ducky box. Duckies are all in the ducky box. I found another ducky this week. I was moving something around in the in the drawer where I have all the main boards, and I found a, another ducky that I hadn't I hadn't pulled out and put into the ducky box. Cause everybody needs one of those, you know. Lucky Duck. <laughs> sure. The one that escaped. The one that got away. Alright. This goes in here. Ah, oh, da, da 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 da. Come on. All right, Z rail, or Z rail, Z chain, alongside the Z rail. I really like that the 0 0.2 moved the chain to the inside extrusion on these machines. I feel like that shot could be one stop uh, brighter. Let me adjust the camera real quick. All the black stuff is blending together too much. Deck panel time. Time for our first panel. Everybody's favorite game, peeling panels. Everybody's favorite game, peeling panels. Alexander, just want to say one favorite creator. Thank you very much. The only person I have notifications on for. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's always nice to know people will appreciate what I do. All right. Matte black panels. All right. I was tempted to start to, to like laser some logo into these or something, but I'm, I think I'm just gonna stick with basic. Probably silly of me, I don't know. If I had more filament, I'm low on the I'm almost out of the cookie cat filament for this. If I had more, I might print a deck panel or something and continue the color scheme, but. Cool. This is always annoying. Cricket stickers. Yeah, uh, Ruby does have a cricket. Could. I could. I also just stick some of my own stickers to it, my logo or something. I always feel like that's a little cheesy. Cricket sticker wouldn't be as cheesy. How long you saw Mako Tools before? You are you're correct, I did. Um Two and a half, three years? I don't remember exactly. I wanna say it was two and a half to three years. Somewhere around there. Why does that seem... This, this table's not the most square, so I might not be helping myself too much here, but... Alright. Uh, 
ba, 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 ba. All right, so that's in. Panels in. I think now we put the front extrusion on after we load a couple more nuts. Yeah, okay, so we gotta load four in the bottom on both sides and three in each side. Okay, I sold tools for at least two years. I think it was three. Yeah. It was a long time ago. A long time ago. Over 10 years ago. Probably 15 years ago now. Right? I think it was about 15 years ago at this point, so. Wow. Well, let's say, oh, fuck, I forgot. I, I forgot. Uh, today's my sober anniversary. And that's 12 years, I think. That's 12 years, I think. 12? Is it 12 or 13? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is it 12 or 13? I can't remember which. And I drank when I sold tools. So... <laughs> uh, how you doing? Doing good. Uh, what is this kit? This is a LDO 0.2 R1 kit. So... The, uh, the updated revision LDO kit. <laughs> Sober the day before St. Patty's Day. That's a rough one. Yeah. There's probably a correlation there. <laughs> Just became even cooler. Awesome. Appreciate it. Three M3s in the top. 9116. You got you got some good years in them too. Two. Don't they have some specific mod in this kit? I mean it comes with the Kirigami bed. Uh this kit comes with the Kirigami bed. Uh with the uh the folded aluminum bed frame. Uh, Pico Bilical, so the electronics board for the tool head and a tool head PCB. Um, I think that's the bulk. There's definitely some like different changes. Some of the printed parts are slightly different. Comes with nut bars instead of having to use nuts for the uh, linear rails. That's the bulk of the differences. And I believe the top hat on the LDO one is slightly different than stock. <laughs> did I put the three on the outside? Yes, I did. I put the three over there. All right. Oh, right. I was like, wait, am I not putting one here? Right, no, I don't because this top pan the side panel goes past. All right, front bar. Front crossbar, not this one. This one. A couple of M3 by 10s. Uh, top hat is stock, as far as I know, just the 100 millimeter tall one. Yeah, but isn't isn't the default one 50 millimeters taller? Or I forget. Uh, the the bed frame is powder coated. It looks like it's probably powder coated. Maybe anodized? Uh, actually, I think it's anodized. Running G2E on... Um, are linear rails worth the upgrade? That's a good question. I've got a set of linear rails for the Neptune 4 Max. Um, 
that I would like to do a stream putting them on. The other option is an 80 millimeter, but that's a terrible option. Yeah, that sounds like a terrible option. Okay, this needs four M4 nuts for uh, the bottom. Yeah, I wouldn't want anything shorter. I'd want taller if it was me. That's my, when I do my rebuild of my 0.1, I'm going taller. All right, bottom facing, Bloop. you go there. Uh, by the way, out of all your printers, which one is your favorite? Not necessarily the most used. Uh, my 0.1, my Voron 0.1 is my personal favorite, I have to say. Uh, very close runner-up is my 2.4, which is both runner-up to my favorite and also my most used machine. So, um, yeah. So, my favorite is my original Voron 0.1. That'll be getting a 0.2 upgrade on stream sometime soon. Pretty impressed with G2E. It's good. Um, I'm running Galileo 2 on, on my 2.4. I could take it or leave it, honestly. It hasn't provided me anything particularly... I haven't noticed an improvement in print quality or anything particularly. I actually lost flow rate. When I went to G2E, I lost like one millimeter cubed per second max. Just, I tested a couple of times, and I just, I lost flow rate. Um, which is fine. And it's also a little heavier than the uh, uh, Clockwork 2 that I had on there before. But the motor on my Clockwork 2 was dying. So I I had to do something. So I was like, ah, oh, let me try Galileo. And it's been good. I learned it and liked it. But I missed the, the Guidler latch. 3D Medic, welcome! I missed the Guidler latch on Clockwork so I could easily swap filaments. It's not nearly as user-friendly with Galileo, in my opinion. Uh, Mad Mike, welcome! Hello! Last chance, nut check. All right, looking from the bottom... There should be four and all three of these. Four, four, four. Yep. I love the LGX light. So do I. My 0 0.1 has an LGX light on it. And when I do the upgrade on it, it is keeping an LGX light. I quite like that extruder. I agree. Three. Three. Nuts checked. Nuts checked. There's three. One. Two. I don't think I actually need the thing is so tiny. It is two, three. Yes. It looks like I might have missed one there. I don't know. Um, or one fell out. Oh, right. I, I do want to put a Nevermore in here, so I need to put in a nut for Nevermore. I will be putting a Nevermore in here. Your V0 is loud? Why is your V0 loud? What kind of noise does it make? Mine's not. Mine mine makes noise, but there's something wrong with it. It needs a rebuild. Um, so, yeah. Put in one nut, because I will be putting a Nevermore in here. Struggling with skipping steps when I go normal 0-1 speed and can't find anything wrong. So I ordered some new motors. I, sometimes that's the thing. How are Nevermores? Good. I run one in my... Uh, there's a Nevermore in my 2.4. I'm putting one in my 0.1. It does a great job of filtering the the chemical smell out of the air. I haven't tested to like scientifically prove that it's actually, you know, saving me from toxic fumes. But it seems to be. All right. This extrusion. Where's, where's the other one? There it is. Yeah. Nope, oh, that one's upside down. My, my V0 makes music. Uh, well then, you should look into... Look into... Um, 
well, possibly running. I can't run mine stealth chop. Or is it my... No, I can't run stealth chop on my 2.4. Um, TMC auto-tune. Look into TMC auto-tune. That, that really helps with motor noise. Printing 5 to 8K accelerations at 200. Yeah, it's about where mine's at. Mine's just got crunchy noise from the, uh, the rails. It makes this weird, like, resonant sound. Wanted to print one and use it for my P1P with A, uh, uh, with ASA. So, I was just curious. Honestly, bento box is great for the, the bamboos. I'm running a bento box in my X1 Carbon. Um, and it's designed to fit in there really nicely. Like, Nevermore will be good. Um, just bento box was intended to fit into a, uh, bamboo printer so it'll be a little easier to install I'd say just a little is my V0 louder than my V2 or not uh yes but I, again I think that is down to my rails I think my rails I might have to replace them what a shame your X1 mod uh, modded the hell out of my X1 at this point Didn't help much. What do you mean, didn't help much? Bento Mini fits perfectly in the V0. I like the look of the Nevermore better. So since the V0 has visible panels, um, like you can see everything, that's where I'm going. Do linear rails tend to go bad? They wear, and they do need maintenance. That's not something that's talked about particularly often, is... Realistically, over time, after a certain number of hours, which depends on the rails and the quality of them, um, the uh, linear rails should be cleaned and re-lubricated. And that's just not something folks do um, much at all. Cough MF Nano. I'm not familiar with MF Nano. Your V2 is silent. My V2, fair bit of motor noise. I cannot run Stealth Chop on my V2. My 2.4, I cannot run Stealth Chop on it. I just skip, it loses steps so bad. Oh, it's your V0 sized filter. All right, I'll look into it. I haven't printed anything for this one. I've already got the Nevermore for my, uh, my other zero. But I haven't printed anything for this one yet. Why is this extrusion trying to pull on me? What are you doing, dude? My V2 has 2,000 hours on it. I've never re-lubed the rails. Yeah, that's definitely over when it should be done. My, uh, I'm probably going to do, um, I believe Vitali is sending over some CNC XY joints and a CNC carriage for my 2.4. And when those show up, I'm going to do a, probably a stream where we'll tear it down and, uh, and re-lubricate things and install those new parts, try and improve my input shaper graphs on that thing a bit. Because they are garbage. We don't talk about maintenance enough, I feel like. Kind of a kind of a thing we don't and, and I know what it is. A lot of us, a lot of us content creators working with machines, don't do maintenance because we will use so many different machines that they don't necessarily get used that much. 
at least that's my case. Um, but my 2.4, my 2.4 I think is closing in on two and a, a thousand hours. Cyber. How many hours are on my 2.4? 959 hours on my 2.4. Do a maintenance stream. I will. I will. Have some rails with fill points. It's, uh, fill ports. It's not as good as a full relube. I was looking at that. There's a mod to add fill ports to regular extrusions. You use a, a hollow, a hollow uh, M3 nut or screw, titanium screw, and you drill through an extrusion. So on the top side, uh, the opposite side of the uh, of the linear rail, you drill through one of the holes of the linear rail. Install a a screw that goes through the top of the extrusion so you can grease through it. I was looking at that. It's a neat idea. Uh, I doubt I'll do it, but. Is print time accumulated automatically? Yeah, if you're on Clipper, it's in your uh, history. Let me pull it up real quick. Screen share. So right over here, uh, there's my print history on my, my 2.4. But print history, total print time, 959 hours. Longest print, 37 hours. Uh, total filament used, 8,200 meters. Total of 550 jobs. Bloop. Wrong camera. All right. Now. Damn it, I just closed the manual. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, right. I never posted that I'm live on Twitter. I just said I was going live. meter on mine so if I reinstall clipper I keep the total print time how are you running that uh, I because I really need to reinstall clipper on my v0 and I want to save the print time on it so I was looking at how to like save the print history out of like moonraker um, which I still want to do in general but I'm curious about how you're running an hour meter on yours Okay, catch up to where I'm at here. Oh, it counts the time if you give it 24 volts. That makes sense. So anytime you're heating, okay, that makes sense. Like slightly skewed by warm up time, but um, well, I guess if you put it on a proper on a circuit, you could put in your print start like the after the heaters heat up to send it voltage. That's a cool idea. That's a cool idea. All right. Did a nut check already. All right, time to put our AB drives together. Turn it on when you start a print. Makes sense. Um. There is a way to back up your history through main sale through the back end. That's what I want to do. I want to get into the Pi, like through File Explorer and uh, back it up. All right. Get that out of the way for the minute and we will put together, we got to put heat press inserts into, uh, Steve did something about saving history. It can be copied over. Cool. Yeah, because I've got to do a full, I'm going to switch my, 
my 0 0.1 from a, a Pi 0 to a Pi 4, and I have to do a full reinstall. I want to do a fresh install of, of Clipper and everything, so I want to save the history. Click the details on, on Discord. Thank you. All right. Um, here's where we start maybe deciding on color because I printed these parts a handful of times. I think I know which ones I'm going to go with, but maybe you folks can... Maybe I can get a vote on this. Uh, Did I only print one pop? I only see one top. Nah, whatever. pulled a couple parts out okay um unicorn for the win yeah okay so i've got with that out of the way i've got dark magic it's so hard for to like show you this color on on stream it's this bluish greenish depending how you look at it um with glitter in it dark magic so i've got a b drives that are dark magic I've got, these ones are my front runner, where it transitions from pink to blue, back to the pink purple at the top. Those are my front runner. And then I've got, well, this is pretty good too. These are a little bandy. Um, these are another unicorn one that is, it, it's got that band in it I don't love, so. There's those two. I think I like this one better with the without the, the band in the middle of it there, personally. Or one option would be to, an option would be to have a dark magic base with a unicorn top. I feel like it's just too dark. We gotta go full unicorn, right? Uh, Clippers should track like specific things that need maintenance, like a robot vacuum cleaner. Honestly, I'm surprised somebody hasn't made a plug-in that, like, pops up a warning based off of print time. That that feels like it's doable. Like, you've got a thousand hours. You need to do this. Um, I think this is the winner. I really like because the, the blue transitions. I, I did these ones. Um, I did these ones so that the top. So what I did was I printed the motor mount in at one point on one bed of prints and then the very next thing i printed was the top for it so that the color transition would properly go from bottom all the way to the top through this whereas the other one it doesn't do that this one it doesn't do that because i wasn't able to, do, to get it right so it's like blue 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 pink it doesn't transition to the pink i don't know Anybody have any input? I think this one's the winner. This unicorn where it nicely transitions from the base to the top. Yeah, Gene. Go with that. All right. I'm going to start putting Heath Press inserts in it. I got to go with something. I'm going to probably end up giving away the rest of these printed parts. Um, maybe as a kit or something to somebody. Probably do a giveaway with the rest of these because I don't want them to go to waste and I'm not going to build another one. So <coughs> I'll probably do a giveaway. I need a big honking unicorn sticker and extra glitter. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. All right. Heat press inserts. I really wish I put together the Vector 3D heat press tool, but I just, I want to get these printers done, so I, I can't bring myself to do it yet. It's the, the cart before the horse situation. I want, I want the tool to build the printers, but I want to build the printers rather than the tool.
My neck has been so angry this week. It's getting better, but not there yet. All right. Okay. Got to set NeoPixels to pink and purple. Big Lisa Frank style stickers. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. All right. I should add some more LEDs to this thing. We'll, we'll see. That's a, that's a, an idea. There's one thing I will probably be lacking port-wise. Oh. All right. A goes with A, obviously. Bam. A with A. B means B goes with B. All right. Your 14 year old daughter asked you to print something. First time she's asked. Awesome. Got to get her in on it. Start, start a, start her getting interested in it. Okay. Now the top we need some long screws, 35s, M3 35s. A drive gets one more heat press insert in the back. Ah, keep dropping this. Now, M335 through it. She's no interest, but her 11 year old son wants a Rubik's solving robot. Oh boy. That'd be a fun engineering challenge. Okay, time for some motion components. Tool head and motion. Tool head and motion. Don't need, oh no, I do need those. Bearings. Why does this come with, hmm, whatever. All right. I need shims, EM3 shims, two servos, an ESP32, and some 3D printed parts. Cool. I Yeah, I guess that's probably something somebody's engineered up already now to think about it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Rubik's Cube's kind of been a thing for a long time. All right, bearing, bearing, double shim stack. Don't drop a twitty little shims. Double bearings. And shim. Now, printed spacer. Five 
find all my printed spacers because I have different color ones. So I want to double T in the house. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to want that soon. Another spacer. Another spacer. Oh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Put stuff in the same totes, yeah. I really shouldn't. I really should separate and organize a lot nicer. I did that for the Trident at Earth and when I knew we were building on a schedule. I like uh, all the printed parts for the motion system went in one bag, etc. I, mean, I should do that, but here we are. Posted videos of your V0 noise level on Voron. Didn't find Manic on Discord. Eh, I don't have a Discord, so. Smarter man than I, Aaron. All right, spacer. I got spacers of plenty to pick from. Cool. Spacers of plenty to pick from. Polymaker boxes are nice organizers. Oh, I've got polymaker boxes full of parts all over here. This is all the tool head parts for the uh, for the Trident build. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. All right, all right. We're gonna go. Yeah, we're gonna go this pink and blue transition one. Keep them to ship printing. That's a good idea. How are you doing this fine sun, uh, Saturday? Doing lovely. Wonderful. Uh, chugging away on this build. And it's going quite smoothly, thankfully. So I probably just jinxed it, but here we are. All right. Shim. Pulley, pulley. Well, bearing, bearing. Not really pulleys. And shim. No way that tea's still hot. It's lukewarm at this point. Spacers! <laughs> Gotta say spacers like uh, Ivan Miranda. Spacers! I can't do it. I don't have the accent. <laughs> I don't have the man's accent. Still want to know who Luke is that he got his own warm. Clearly a one hot mother effer. All right. One. Oh, oh, oh. One. All right. B time. Oh, they want me to put the motor in. Okay. Motors. Motors. Better late than never. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Good to have you. We appreciate it. All right. Now I got to... Pulley this, motor pulley this, and I put the grub screws over here. Oh. You know, another hot shower and a stretch soon.
Gotta get the pulleys on here. Using an accent color. The unicorn is the accent color. Um, arguably, foam roller. Yeah, we've got like three foam rollers in the house. It's The problem is it's like my neck is jacked up from like the muscle that runs like the back of your shoulder up into the base of your skull there is what's jacked up. So it's not great to foam roll it. I've been uh, rugging, rubbing Tiger Balm on it at night and like making sure I sleep with my head on the pillow, kind of like stretching it out a little bit and that's helping. But definitely helping trapezius muscle. Okay. Probably doesn't help that I'm like hunched, you know, looking down at parts all week. Arnica cream. Yeah, I, I've used that in the past. The Tiger Balm is kind of like an icy hot kind of thing. A large part of the problem for me is like I get tense when I sleep. It's weird, but like I tense up and I feel like that causes me a lot of muscle problems. So like I take some ibuprofen and put that stuff on it right before I go to bed. So like my muscles are kind of forced to relax. And that seems to help quite a bit. A little tool here, set our motor height. Boop. Our pulley height, I should say. I always feel like this tool should be just a little bigger so it reaches a little better than it does. little too far mm, back just a hair just fried an MAP troubleshooting with the multimeter ah sorry to hear that time to go to bed yeah sometimes that's that's the best answer when things go wrong is just walk the hell away sorry to hear that all right give this a Titan Our A motor is in place. Our pulley for the A motor. Okay. Sorry to hear that. Uh, M3, more M335s with washers. Yeah, I get real, I get real, uh, real careful whenever I break out the multimeter around the printer because I have, I've fried a few things in my time already. It happens, unfortunately. All right. Tiger Bomb, my favorite, colloquially known as the ointment, as everything's in, in a metal tube in the same drawer. Hey, yep, yeah, got to. Yeah, I, I get that. Going with this one? No. No, that looks better. Put our little nut on here. Nutter. Oh, heck. Torn cartilage in your right shoulder and your right handed. That stinks. I, uh, I damaged my both my rotator cuffs some years ago in a rock climbing accident. That was terrible. I was a mechanic at the time, too. Well, I was a custom car builder. Uh, and so, like, reaching over my head for, like, almost a year was excruciating. And I had to do it on a regular basis. I never went to the doctor for it or anything because I was like, okay, cool. What are they going to tell me to do? Rest? can't do that I work <laughs> didn't even have insurance all right cool 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 one a B drive 
uh, or A drive is done, time for the B. You look good. B, B, B. Yeah, it was a pretty shitty... I'm sure it probably would have healed in like three months. I don't think I tore them, but they were both damaged at the same time. And um, it's one of those where I like, if I probably could have taken three months off to rest or like worked a, de a desk job or something for three months, I probably would have been fine. But then I now have like lifelong pain because I couldn't do that. The world we live in. All right, B drive. Uh, more M335s. Um, looks like my Mercury One looks good. Have um, have you hung the display mount anywhere for it? Uh, you mean have I posted the display mount somewhere? No, I never posted the display mount. I wasn't sure if anybody would want it. And I don't know how well it would fit your V-Core since the V-Core uses 3030 extrusions, right? It was designed around 2020 extrusions. Well, 2040. Um, if, if folks want me to release the design files, I will. Uh, how do I move from Hot Rod to, um, to printing? Uh, I was making Hot Rod content I, I may I have a whole another YouTube channel. It's all about cars, and I was uh, I was making hot rod content for years, struggling, trying to make it work. It never did. I made a few videos about about three D printing, just uh, here and there, and that content took off like never before. And also, my brain I also just like um, got obsessed with three D printing pretty quickly, personally. And as such, I made the switch to 3D printing content because it was clear there was a path forward with 3D printing content where there wasn't with cars, for me anyway. And here we are. Best explanation I can have while I'm working. <laughs> I tried to make car content work and it just never did. 3D printing content kind of caught on uh, pretty rapidly. All right. When I, I'm, I need, I, I'm going to be working on releasing my Mercury one files in general. Um, very soon. It's been, I get, I get an email almost every day with folks asking for them. I will be working on it. So I will add the screen to the list. I will add the screen to the list. All right. Cool. 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 My bearing stack going together. Holy shit. Hello. Welcome to the stream. All right. All right. I forgot to put those M335s in that. How long ago did I switch? Oh, two years, I want to say. During the pandemic, I switched. Toward the end of the pandemic. Well, not that it's ever really ended. Um, but yeah. Oh, M330, not 35s. Um, so like 2021, I think I made the switch. I mean, you can look back on my... Hot Rod Hippie YouTube channel and see when I stop making videos. Pretty obvious. I haven't posted a new video there in two years. Other than like a, a short or two. Other than a short or two. I, I tried. Uh, I did Hot Rod Hippie for four or five years. And I mean, like, for at least two or three of those years, I didn't miss a single week uploading a video. 
every single week I had a video up and it just never caught on. It's still, it has more subscribers than Mandic really does, but it just never made any money. Um, still has more subscribers. Just never made any money. And I couldn't justify spending money to keep making the videos. Which was the reality of it. I have a lot of hobbies, but nothing like 3D printing. From design part, build it, uh, print it, build it, build a printer. Yeah, I mean, 3D printing really like took over my brain, which is a large part of why the transition happened. Glad, glad it took off. Love your content. Thank you. Uh, can't even imagine how hard it is to compete with huge budget uh, car channels. Absolutely. Realistically, that's that's what it comes down to is with car content if you if you don't have like a thriving hot rod shop business where you just film videos while you're doing your day job or have a budget backing you already or whatever like trying to make it from the ground up is just it's not easy just not easy Where did I just put those grub screws? I need the grub screws for this. I had them. Obviously I had them. I put them in the other side. They have good channels. Thank you very much. Uh, 3D printing is kind of life altering. It's how you make your living now. How I make my living. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, you know, my brain latched onto it and here we are. Glad you found your way to 3D printing. Thank you. Yeah, oh, there they are. Right in front of me. Uh, looking for mods for the Ender 3 V3 KE because they don't like the way the tool heads put together. I know Micro Swiss, I think, just came out with their hot end for the, uh, the K1. I think they made it for that now. Do you run any 3D printing service or just full-time content? Just full-time content. Uh, content is all I do. I do like 3D printing service work once in a while. Like, rarely. Um... I'm just not set up for it. Uh, it's kind of a slippery slope of like uh, the way that all goes. I, I, I'll do it from time to time and usually only when it's like a customer or something that I uh, that I, I am familiar with or whatever. Found the hot end you want but no replacement extruder. Um, there is, I know for the K1, for the Creality K1, Bontech, I think, just launched a replacement for the for that setup uh, to put the LGX extruder on it. So that I mean, the extruder that's in the Creality K1 and also the the uh, V3 KE and whatever is um, it's a clone of the Bontech extruder, just lower quality. Uh, so the Bontech LGX Lite, I'm pretty sure Bontech just came out with an adapter kit to put the real uh, LGX light on the K1. I don't know about the K the uh, V3 KE. I don't have one to say how similar it is or whatever. Yeah, competition. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Unique voices matter. The, like, competition in content creation shouldn't be a deciding factor. And, like, I had a unique voice in some ways, and it worked in some ways. But just making car content is just costly, and I didn't have a garage at the time. And then when I got this garage space, it wasn't really big enough to, to like, build a car. Uh, I don't know if it got released. I saw a teaser. Maybe it hasn't been released yet. John, 
the the uh, Bond Tech extruder setup. I know there's also I'm fairly sure there's like a printable mod. That's one of the things about Bond Tech. I don't think Bond Tech really they don't design their mounts and stuff. They usually find open source projects and then they just tweak them to be MJF printed. Usually, like the this CPAP cooler with the LGX mount and all this from Bond Tech. This is all Bond Tech parts. But they didn't design this stuff. It's open source parts that they took the the parts, modified them for this particular printing process, and then sell them. Um, so I think there's already an LGX Lite mod out there, uh, but they're just selling the their official parts. How do I keep up with all the new 3D printing news, new products? Honestly, audience helps me a lot. Um, I'm constantly, when I'm doing these streams or in the comment sections of videos, people will mention like, oh, like the Ender 3 NG. Uh, I posted I posted on Instagram, like an Instagram story. I had a, a main board that I wasn't sure what I'm going to put it in. I was like, oh, I want to use this in something. What should I build with it? Just fishing for people to be like, oh, build this or build that or whatever. And then somebody told me about the Ender 3 NG, and I'd never heard of it before that. And I looked into it, and I'm like, oh, look at that. Um, uh, MBR, yeah, Nathan built. Uh, Nathan has a mount for different extruders. Yeah, but that's a little taller, yeah. Okay. Uh, a centralized news source for 3D printing, like what LTT does with TechLinked, for 3D printing would be neat. Yeah, it would be. Um, I know Sean was doing that for a little bit before he got banned, unfortunately. Um, 3D printing general. He was kind of doing 3D printing news. Um, nobody's really filled that space. You, you do feel like that, that could work, right? It's not for me. I, I don't feel like that, that would be my place to do that. Like, it's just not, I don't have the time as much as anything to, to turn around content on a timely enough basis. Why do you get banned? Never did get an official answer that I'm aware of. He 3D printed guns. Um, he had removed all the gun printing content from his channel after multiple warnings. So he, to my not, so it was kind of a, like a, out of nowhere one day he just got banned. And it really didn't make sense and... When he reached out, he wrote really crappy answers. Now he works with Polymaker. After that all went bad, uh, Polymaker hired him to work with them and help out uh, so he didn't just like lose everything. Yeah, I mean, it's not like he was the only 3D printing gun content out there. So. I uh, signed a bunch of newsletters around my work, engineering. Uh, I would love something 3D printing. You know, I've really... Like, I have a mailing list, but I don't use it much. Um, I should really look at, at, like, doing some more 3D printing-centric thing like that. It's an idea. Maybe that's something I could, uh, I could justify having an assistant do some research on and, uh, and then just, you know, final edit. Put it into my own language. Put it out there. Yeah, Sean, 3D Print General works with uh, Polymaker now. He's uh, he's actually my contact at Polymaker. He was he was the one who reached out to me when uh, when Polymaker offered to sponsor. Well, that's a good idea. Start with uh, just like posting what people have been posting, like uh, streams and videos and such. That's a great idea. Or at the very least, make have a section in it where that uh, that's part of it. That's a good idea. Didn't he start? Uh, no. Um, yeah, some people. There was there was rumor that he started a second channel that to re-upload the gun gun content on, but according to him, and I believe him, that was a fan. A fan had downloaded the videos and was doing that. And that kind of got him in hot water. 
YouTube viewed it as him trying to get around them blocking some stuff and um and that that kind of got him out so and it, it bit him when the fan did that that's the that's his line on it anyway and I, I have no reason to doubt him you get that one free other good ideas will cost you <laughs> thanks John <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Motor two is together. Uh, double check that. Pulley looks good. All right. I think we're ready to drop these on the frame. Yep. Frame back. Let's get the frame back in here. Three thirty fives. All right. Start that. What do I plan on using this new printer for? Just for small parts production. When I need small parts for builds, I like these machines for like quickly, quickly running them off. I did a whole video about a uh, of these zeros called it uh, small printers are pointless on my on the main channel some months ago kind of talking about what I use it for and why I like them Honestly this one I have I'm not 100% what it's going to be used for I kind of just wanted to build another V0 can V0 be made silent sure um, they'll always be fairly noisy unless you go slow but Small printers are very useful. I agree. Yeah, I called it small printers are pointless just for the clickbaitiness of it. My V0 prints out, uh, spits out beautiful prints. I believe it. Yeah, my V0 is great for just pumping out littler parts or like Voron parts in the middle of a project. Heat up fast, spit out time, parts quickly. Yeah. All that. All that. Ah, this one keeps sliding. It's nut. Can't see it. I never did sort out the vertical issue on my, my screen on my uh, Mercury One. Nope. I never did. Nope, it's still messed up. Why is this one, like, angling? There we go. It kept It kept angling. Uh, Neptune 4s heat up fast. The bed does at least. Or the, the uh, hot end does at least. I mean, yeah, but this is an enclosed chamber. The whole chamber gets hot fast. So when you're printing ABS and ASA where you need a warm chamber, this is a great machine to just like quickly, I like it for prototyping. I have my, my original one on the end of my desk. It's literally next to my mouse while I'm designing parts. So I can design a part, send it from my computer to the printer that's literally at arm's reach, prototype a part, pull it off the bed, check it out and be like, yeah, it's good. And then I can send it to production on the bigger machine or or keep running it on the smaller machine. Um, it's great for that kind of stuff. It's great for just making parts in general, but. Yeah, this is going to be fully enclosed. This will be fully enclosed when it's all said and done. All right, there we go. All right. Now I get all the screws lined up. Nuts. Get our 
B drive on. We'll put the A on. Maybe we'll get this thing belted before this stream's over. Coming up on coming up on three hours, not quite there. Once you go ABS ASA, you never go back. Uh, that's true for me, so. Um, is Dragon High Flow still a good choice for a new Trident? No. Um, uh, some screens need screen rotate, some need LCD rotate. I tried both of those, and the problem is the screen image rotates fine. That'll rotate the way I need, but the buttons don't rotate with it. And I think it's LCD rotate is supposed to move the buttons with it. And for whatever reason, it does not do it on the screen install of Clipper and install of Clipper screen that I have. I tried uninstalling and reinstalling multiple times. It didn't fix it. I'm going to revisit it soon because the machine needs an overhaul right now anyway. So, um, Dragon High Flow. I have a Dragon High Flow in my 0.1 right now. I don't know what I'm going to do with it when I take it out of there because the Rapido is a better hot end. If you're, if you're looking at something just to fit into a stealth burner, the Rapido flows higher than a high flow right out of the box, and they cost about the same. Uh, so I would recommend a Rapido over that, over the Dragon High Flow. Okay, second side. Second verse, same as the first. Personally, that's what I would recommend. If you want to stick with a stealth burner, that is. Yeah, Rapido, Rapido doesn't really have any downsides and Rapido has no heat creep issues. Yeah, I, I never had any heat creep. I had, the only time I ever had heat creep issues on the Rapido were my own damn fault. Where I, I had PLA loaded and I tried to print it with, uh, I tried to, I sent like an ABS print profile to it or something. Like it was my own damn fault. Um, but honestly, I drilled that with a 1.5 millimeter drill bit and cleared it out and was able to keep on running. I only just removed it. So just to try something different. Yeah, going with SB, yeah, I would definitely recommend the Rapido. I like the Dragon High Flow, I do. Um, dr heat creeps only, yeah, I've, I've not really had, um, I've not had much in the way of heat creep issues on my, my 0 0.1. The the worst I had was when a fan died, hot end fan, um, with the Dragon in that. It's been pretty good. What nozzle do you use in your bamboo? It's 0.4. I don't think 0.6 really makes sense in the bamboo, personally. Especially now that I've got the E3D high flow hot end in the bamboo. With the E3D high flow obsidian hot end in 0.4 in the bamboo, the machine prints so fast, a, a bigger nozzle doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, I've not found those cheap E3D V6 clones with the uh, ceramic heaters, they flow like crap in my opinion. I mean, not, not terrible, better than a V6, but barely better than a V6. Um, I don't really think they're worth it, personally. Um, somebody asked about uh, Rapido, or Revos. Yes, I have a handful of machines rather than Revo. I love Revo. I wish it flowed a little better than it does, even with high flow. Uh, my Mercury One has a Revo in it, and it's probably going to keep the Revo. This is getting a Revo in it right now. My original Ender 3 has a Revo in it. Um, I might put a Revo... I'm tempted. I might put a Revo in place of the Dragon High Flow in my my V0. I'm tempted to do it. Uh, do you have any particulate matter sensors? I'm thinking of adding one to your printer. No. Nope. I've seen the Titan. What, the Titan Extruder? Do you mean? Interested in building a Rook? Not really. Um... I don't, it, I don't really see how a Rook fits into my own needs. And however much I just love building machines, which I do, I have to have a reason for the machines I'm building, personally. And just haven't been... How's the stream going? Welcome, Norton Tech. Uh, it's going well. What are your takes on all the clones on AliExpress and Timu? I don't know. 
They are what they are. A lot of them are garbage. Titan Hot End. I'm not sure what you're talking about. So maybe I have not seen it. I know the Titan Arrow Extruder um, from E3D back in the day. Not that old, really. What hot end is going in this? This is getting a Revo High Flow. This is getting a Revo High Flow. And I'm going to test the Revo High Flow in this. If I'm happy with it, I'll put it in my other zero. Dom, you're back. Welcome. I really love the Revo ecosystem personally. I understand it's pricey. It doesn't necessarily flow as much as I might want it to. I wish it flew, flowed just a little more, but... Yeah, for Revo, they would have to make a longer heater element. And I honestly really hope they come out with a Revo Volcano. Whether they will or won't, I don't know, but I hope they do. I was thinking about that this week, actually. I was like, if we just take a longer ceramic heater and just the heater section of the hot end, the nozzle to be longer, Revolcano. Haha, <laughs> that's cool. They have something new coming out next week. Um... I have no idea what it is. They have, I have no inside knowledge. Usually they tell me when something's coming out, but they haven't told me what this is. If it's Revo Volcano, I will be so in because my Mercury 1 could really use more flow. It's got a Revo High Flow in it now, and it's okay, but the, mechanic, the mechanical system of my, Revo, of my Mercury 1 is capable of a lot more speed than the High Flow is. They'll charge $100 for the heater and another 100 for the nozzle. Yeah, but, like, the nozzles are great quality. They hold up. I've yet to have a single clog on one personally. And if you just have, a, like, a handful of nozzles that you don't need to change often or swap around, I don't know. Overpriced. I mean, British manufacturing, licensing... The Bontech technology, which is not Bontech, 3D Solex technology for the high flow. They have to pay licensing fees to do that the right way. All these AliExpress sellers aren't doing that. They're just undercutting, undercutting, and making low quality stuff. Like, it it stinks. I get that. I do. Um, yeah. And the first Revo I ever, I ever ran, I bought, and I put in my uh, Prusa Mark III, and I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, they make stuff in Oxford, England. Um, and I've been to the factory, and they're lovely people, and they treat their employees really well. That's unfortunately the way it goes. If it was... It could... Especially, like, that, that new Obsidian hot end in the bamboo, it really needs to be, like, $15 cheaper. Uh, TZ V6 2.0. Not familiar. Let me look it up. TZ V6 2.0 hot end. Oh, 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 the new bamboo one. Is it? No. Oh, I see what it is. It's the bamboo heater element on the end of a V6 hot end, right? I'm working on my, my Mercury 1. It's too fast. I need to slow down. I mean, yeah, the mechanical system on Mercury 1 is probably, at the moment, my fastest printer. At the moment. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay. Where's that here? Honestly, I was half tempted to put one of those uh, Obsidian High Flow bamboo hot ends into my my two point or my V zero. I never swapped nozzle sizes on that. Uh, have you ever had problems with Revo heaters? I have not had it. I've seen other people have them, but I haven't had any issues. How many streams to finish this one? Probably one or two. I'm well, two or maybe three, maybe. Uh, LDO two point four kit coming. Uh, need to change the core. I mean, you can use the stock core with, with Revo High Flow, but it definitely works better with with the uh, with the higher 
wattage one. All right, these are all tight. Now we can move forward. I don't think a higher wattage heater would make much of a difference. Higher wattage heat doesn't increase flow. Just throwing a higher, uh, a hotter, um, a hotter heater element in doesn't really increase flow. It will help if your flow rate is high enough that plastic is moving through so quickly. It's like pouring water on something. If you got a hot stone and you drip water on it, it's going to cool off a lot slower than if you dump a bucket on it. So if you're flowing a lot of a lot of filament, you're going to be wicking the heat away. So you need a hotter element then, but that's not really a limitation of the heater element. It can too small of a heater element will hurt flow. Too big of a heater element won't improve flow. The best way I could probably put it. Uh, partial to the Rapido. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier, Norton. That's kind of my go-to recommendation for a hot end right now is the Rapido with a CHT nozzle. Biney, hello. Uh, higher wattage are usually only good for higher temp stuff, like ABS with high flow rate. Yeah. All right, now I got to do the idlers. Where are you at in here? I know you're here. One part. Where the heck are these pieces? My my organization my organization system is failing me. Who would believe it? Who would ever believe such a thing? My oh so carefully thought out organizational system. There we go. And there we go. I think that's it. Yes. I have two rapid uh, high flows and zero complaints. Awesome. Uh, how about a volcano ceramic with CHT? I haven't tried it. Oh. Have not tried that. Unless you kind of look a. Uh, Uh, 70 watt heater on your Dragon UHF struggles a little bit, but that's printing PC at 300C at 40 millimeters cubed. Understandable. Uh, I got a 70 watt heater for the one that's going in this machine, but I'm only intending to really print like ABS and ASA on that. Hoping 70 watts going to be enough to keep up with that. Um, for the Trident build that is. All right. Upside down. Looking at these. All right, so this needs 335. Yeah, like the uh, that the Mosquito Magnum Plus that's going in the next 2.4 build, that's got 100 watts of heating because it's got two 50 watt heater elements that are going in it. But I'm intending to print higher temp materials with that. So, you know, polycarbonate and nylon. Uh, so I'll be running 300C and I want to maintain that pretty well, so. Uh, any tips for dealing with the nasty styrene of ABS and ASA? Um, filtration. Charcoal filtration. Run a Nevermore. Run a bento box. They make a world of difference. They really do. Is that the hot end Tom has in his 2.4? Yeah, it is. Same one. Same one Tom in his, has in his, yes. Build a 5-axis printer out of Prusa Mark III parts. It's cool. I don't know. That's neat. I've seen a couple of those. Did you buy the Bond Tech SB? No, Slice Engineering provided it for that build. That was all provided by Slice Engineering, the whole full Bond Tech setup. Cause that that stuff is pricey. But you you can print the parts, uh, the printable parts. You can do. You can, obviously, you have to buy the hot end or whatever. But uh, the printable parts are available. I have a. I probably end up replacing the hot end alone. Is like two hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think this whole setup, 
I think this whole thing with the MJF printed parts, it's got an EBB 36 can board inside of there, the LGX light extruder, the, the slice engineering hot end, the Mosquito Magnum Plus. I think this full thing, I did the math at one point, it's like seven, $800 for this. I mean, that build, that build is meant to be bling. That build is meant to be like over the top. That's the point of that build, so. I do, I might end up replacing the face on that one. I don't know. I kind of like the black stealthy look, but then I also, I did this. I made this one. Uh, obviously printed black with blue and gray. This is probably going to be a similar color scheme to the uh, Trident build on that one. Uh, is that MJF SB going in the high temp doom? Yes, it's going in the doom cube. Yeah, 2.4 doom cube, I'm calling it. Do you think modders will do anything interesting with the Giga? I think the Giga is going to get some interesting mods eventually, yeah. Uh, apparently the Rapido has a thin heat break. It can be killed by abrasives. I guess eventually, but you're not usually seeing wear in the throat of your heat break. I feel like you'd have to run quite a few kilograms through it before you see that. I would think. I don't run abrasives. I don't run abrasives that often personally, so I'm not the best to, to probably say. Do you consider the Giga? Does it build volume appeal to you? Not, I mean, yes, no. Um, I, I don't have space for it is the biggest problem. Like my studio may not be small, but like that would take up a significant portion of my studio and I cannot justify it. I just can't. The only reason I would get it is to print dumb shit for social media just to print large, ridiculous things to grab attention in shorts and whatever, which for my business is not a bad idea, um, but it's not for me. I don't know. Uh, who'll be the first to enclose the, uh, I mean, somebody should. Honestly, no, that's a legitimate issue on a machine that big. Uh, ben, It's Boy in Space actually already ran into that problem um ben it's boy in space already ran into a problem with it because he was printing pla he printed a, a large vase mode pre pla print like the full build height and he had a sliding glass door open on it in his living room which is near like five feet away from where the print was happening on the giga and the wind coming through the door caused the print to move just enough to cause layering consistency in it uh, he was like, what's wrong with this thing? And he kind of realized that the wind was actually making the print move and or causing cooling issues. Um, so iconic, welcome. So honestly, even printing PLA, you might want to include at least like side panels and maybe an open top so the heat can escape, but you don't get drafts through it. That's a, when you're printing for days, there's a lot of variables that we don't have to deal with on smaller printers. I, I tweeted about it yesterday. Bigger the printer, bigger the problems. Um, at least with the size, it's pretty easy. You just buy a full sheet of Perspex and you're good. I mean, you're right. You could. Won't be too difficult. Four by eight sheet and slap it on the side. Let it go tall or whatever. Uh, okay. These through here. A Disa one. Bigger printers, much more waste also, uh, unfortunately. Totally. Especially if you got failed prints. If you have a failed print, forget it. I mean, freaking huge. For vase mode, I'd want to run a CHT on the Giga. Yeah, but the Giga isn't... It almost certainly runs those proprietary nozzles. It's got that like super volcano length hot end, but I believe it's running um, proprietary nozzles. So, all right, I got to preload M4s or, or M3s over here. Four of them. Four of them. What are those four? Oh, right, the two magnets. Foam filament almost looks edible. You're not wrong. It does. It's like it's like a Sunday or something. 
Sherbert. They look like next Druder clones. Oh, they're they're longer like that with the in, integrated uh, heat break. Hadn't seen them yet. I just know the Neptune 4 Max has those like over volcano length hot end nozzles in it. The the hot end on the Giga is longer. It's uh it's like yeah, it's more like Goliath length than it is uh or some 2.4 millimeter slice nozzles. I really want to play with some of those. It is cookie cat. It is. It sounds edible. You're right. It's not, but it sounds it. Um, yeah. Okay. I want to put a little Loctite on this before I put it on. Maker Viking, welcome. I heard Goliath oozes like a mofo. I'm sure. Long melt zones just do. I mean, that's not always the case, but can be. Not always the case. I wonder uh, the oozing issues that I was having on this Cookie Cat ABS today. I wonder if it's not that that um, hot end I put in there, the uh, Drop Effect Next G. It has a longer melt zone. That's how it's getting more flow. So I do wonder about that. All right, a couple more M335s. Phoebe's 3D, welcome. Or, hi. Not sure if you were here and you're just saying hi, but. Ah! Kicked us. Ah, da da da. Alright. A little more Loctite. These ones are hard to get to after the machine goes together, so I'm gonna put a little Loctite on them. I probably should have done that on these ones too. Maybe I will. Back them out and put a little Loctite. Whoop, as I drop a nut, I drop that. Like the XG, it's a nice hot end. Well, I'm talking about the next G. I have the XG in the um, in Project Reanimator still, and my 2.4. I just put the next G, the new version, in that one. So far, I'm liking it. So far, I like it. All right, I'm gonna take one or two of these out of here and put a little Loctite on them because they're going to be underneath the extrusion so they won't be accessible later for retightening over time. I always worry about that. You meant the next G. Okay. Yeah, so far I like it. I'm pushing like 40 millimeters cubed reliably out of it. It, it flew. It flew. It flowed more than that, but that was where I, I always dial back off of maximum with my print profiles. I don't I don't push things to the max all the time. So come on. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave that one. Screw it. I'll leave that one. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see somebody come out with the uh, with a single piece bed for the for the Giga. Yeah, you know, I, I was talking to uh, to Joel and uh, Clayton and it's and Ben, its boy, about that who all three have Gigas already, and each of them said the bed, like the whole independent four beds thing, they hate it already. Or at least hate might be a strong word, but like getting it leveled and whatever was annoying. It should really be like a fixed, like a, a 2.4, a fully fixed bed, not a leveling bed. I mean, it's rather large, so I guess it might need thermal expansion, but. Okay. Cool. These are good. 
Idlers should match up with the bearing stacks. They do. Lovely. Looks like a nightmare level. It is. I was talking to uh, Uncle Jesse this morning about it. He was working on it this morning, and he uh, he said it uh, it took him like 30 minutes to do one of the four beds. It's got four beds on it. It took him 30 minutes to do one of them. Get a giant grill plate, yeah. <sighs> there's there's options out there as to what you could do, but Z motor time. Z motor time. Is Z motor time? beacon well it needs manual leveling too the the machine has four independent beds and if they're not aligned to each other uh, i don't care what you do i don't care what you do with bed leveling if if from if a transition from one bed to the next is like a millimeter jump you're gonna have problems you're gonna have problems All right. Needs a 13 millimeter slab of MIC6. Yeah, pretty much. Blanchard ground flat. That'll be cheap. <laughs> That'll be cheap. I'm on page 92. Okay. Give you them three by twelves. Uh, do you? I use Fusion three hundred and sixty. Yes, I do. Uh, How did I learn? Self taught. I just trial and error. Took my manual cardboard aided design experience from when I built cars and started like applying it to the way I design parts in CAD. Every time I ran into a problem that I couldn't figure out, I'd look up a YouTube video or a or a uh, forum post about how to correct it. And I work my way from there. I do not claim to be particularly good. <laughs> um, we were talking about that yesterday. Like my designs, the way I design things is a disaster. It's a mess. A professional engineer looking at my designs would have a, an aneurysm. But it works for me. And I get parts done. So like, I don't care. <coughs> When they're done with it, ugh. when you're done with it, you can uh, build a fort out of it uh, for their kids. Yeah. Hmm. There's a fun project idea with the Giga. You remember those like play school little uh, forts that, well, at least when I was a kid, were a thing for like kids, the plastic go together forts. 3D print one on a Giga. <laughs> print the individual pieces, put it together. There's a video idea for Joel. I like how Max from Boron does direct editing modeling and drives everyone bonkers with it. I mean, that's, I don't even know. I, there you go. I don't even know what that means, honestly. I, I think I've accidentally done direct editing before, but um, I just like, uh, are inductive sensors silent? Yes, they're silent. The only noise you'll hear is your motor, uh, is your Z motor noise as it's going up and down. Um, what was I going to say? I forget. No parametric data. Oh, um, yeah, I largely work that way as well. Not always, but like, I don't lock in my designs. I don't make sure each of my designs is, uh, what's the, what is it called? When they, uh, when they're locked in. I forget. Or like Project Reanimaker. When I was done Project Reanimaker, I had like 200 sketches all in a row 
when I had to go down to components, I had to scroll through all of my sketches. <laughs> I've only recently started like trying to use components. There's just some things about the way that those things work that just aren't intuitive. Constrained, yes. I don't worry about constraining my sketches. I don't give a shit. People flip. When I especially when I post something to like the forums. Um when I post to like the, the problems to the fusion forums, they're always like, Your your sketches aren't constrained. That's your issue. I'm like, that's not my fucking issue. I know that's not my issue. <laughs> um whatever. It's just it's the, it's the, some people can't look past the right way to do things. Like the way I do things, it, I, if I was working in an engineering firm, I would worry about it more where I knew other people were going to have to work with the sketches and the things that I was doing, but it, I'm not, I work with myself. And when I release my designs, I release step files that are easier for people to work with. Uh, the workflow of Fusion has been a challenge to learn from coming from other CAD software. I mean, that's probably a large part of it for me is I don't have the experience of other softwares to, uh, like I, I use SolidWorks forever ago, so long ago, but I don't remember. So I don't have any bad habits or anything from it. I just have all new bad habits from Fusion. I just have to get it to the point it can be printed. Don't consider releasing to others. Yeah. I uh, I always go back and I clean things up um, for release, personally. So that's why like people have been asking for my Mercury 1 files for a while. And I want to release them, and I will. But it's just I haven't taken the time to go back and clean things up. So I learned with SolidWorks in school, and now I've been using Onshape, similar workflow. Yeah. I considered trying on shape, but I don't know. I've been largely happy with Fusion for for my purposes, so they made a few changes recently. I haven't loved, but I can still make it work. I still make it work. Okay, last chance. Yeah, I'm good. On shape's good, except for the licensing being garbage or trash. Yeah. Oh, you want me to put feet on now? Okay. Footsie time. Use Creo Parametrics at work. Never heard of it. Creo Parametrics. I have never heard of it. All right. Time to put feet on. I gotta put inserts in. Uh, transition from SolidWorks because Fusion. Uh, uh, yeah, they're whittling away at the free license. I haven't been on the free license in forever. I moved away from the free license a while ago, so not really a factor to me. I moved away from the free license quite some time ago. So it's it's a, a integral part of my business so how, however i looked at it i was not i didn't really qualify for the free anymore so i pay for it and it's a business expense uh one of those punks using shaper 3d and it's amazing software for designing printer related stuff cool supply or well power inlet uh love fusion use it almost every day i use it every single day every single day i use it all right insert 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 let me make sure I, which feet i've got here i make sure i'm putting this together the way i should be um See, I've got two of these left fronts, it looks like. I don't know how I ended up with that. There we go. Two left fronts. I don't need them. I 
Love to see a stream design process. I used to do that on Twitch from time to time. I should do it again. I used to do that on Twitch from time to time. I should. Have to go. All right. Thank you for being here, Jack. Thanks for being here. I probably am not going to last too much longer myself. I need to go eat something soon. I need to go eat something soon as well. But thank you for being here. Oh. Okay. Free cat is intimidating. I don't remember. I feel like I've tried it, but not in a long time. I don't remember. I found, I kind of like lucked into finding fusion and it worked perfectly for my needs. And then I moved to the pay model before they started taking everything away from the free model. And so I've been pleasantly working away. Meets my needs. I wish I would have started learning other stuff like Blender and some other things while I was learning Fusion so I could like be more flexible about jumping around or like Shaper or whatever just so I was I was l less bound to Fusion but I am. But I currently am. Okay. Footsies. Footsies. Not you. Not your footsies. These footies. How many? How much do? You, how much is Fusion, or how much do I pay? I think I pay like four hundred dollars a year. Pretty sure I'm paying like four hundred dollars a year. The key with Fusion. Um, the key with Fusion is to not auto renew. That pisses me off each year. Because. They give better deals to the people who are signing up versus returning customers. So I let it lapse and or cancel right before it's uh, due to renew and then sign up fresh again. It's so dumb. Hate software as a service subscription. I both understand it and hate it. Like, I get it. I don't know. I pay for so many freaking software subscriptions at this point just doing my job that it, I'm just, it is what it is, but... $400 a year is a lot. It is a lot for a hobbyist, especially. If if you're just... Um, yeah. Like, if you're just doing the hobby stuff, like, totally, it's a lot. I make my living in part from Fusion, so... Uh, hate those deals where you're screwing over. And, yeah, I, I sent them... This year, I sent them a feedback. Uh, rent everything, own nothing. Yeah, unfortunately. I sent them a feedback thing this year being like, you know, you're really screwing over your own freaking people here and it really sucks. Uh, you know, like I, I, I come back every year, but you're, but I overpay every year. It's ridiculous. I understand they're trying to lure in new customers, but maybe try to keep the customers you have too. Uh, I admit it was a huge pain to convert my mindset how to work for 3D modeling coming from 2D design. Yeah, and that's that's part of the why the way I design I do is I really designed mostly two-dimensionally. Because when I worked in, in fabrication, most of what I made was flat plate metal. Or when I shaped sheet metal and I bent break it and blah, 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 it still was all 2D pattern work. So sketches in Fusion, easy for me totally easy and that's why I rely on them so heavily is because I'm coming from that background to me every single thing I design is over up and that's the way I think over up over up like you know an angle you're not drawing a 45 degree angle how far is it over how far is it up that's your angle like the way my mind works anyway uh footsies 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 oh, I gotta put one on the side of this
kids are getting restless. They're, they're wandering around my feet behind the desk here. I'm not putting a switch in this thing. Okay, now we can put the skirts on. Or the one off the skirts, the feet. Footsies. I wanted to get this belted, but I don't, I'm starting to get real hungry. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Morning all, welcome. Where are you chiming in from that it's morning there? What's the build volume on this? 120 squared, 120 millimeters squared. Uh, the SolidWorks for Makers is now full access for between 40 to 90 a year. I haven't looked at that. Um, I've heard about it, but I haven't looked at it. Why are you not spinning in? Australia, welcome. Is this one stream's worth of work? Yes, it is, Brian. One stream's worth of work. I started assembling the frame last night off stream, but didn't really get a lot done. I like greased the rails and such before stream. That's pretty much what I did. I missed a heat, heat press here. I missed an insert. A lot bigger than it looks to be honest. Yeah, 120 squared. This is also like my fifth V0 at this point, I think. Yeah, I'm not using that filament runout sensor. I'm gonna use one like it. Halfway to where you are. Stop to tune in PLA settings after pushing plastic. Fair. Fair. Uh, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Two more of the forties. Haven't used your Voron for over a year now. That's that's sad. Doesn't meet your needs. Doesn't meet your needs. I use mine every day, ish. Do you get a bamboo and stop using the Vorons, or you just don't print much? Uh, almost done with uh, URBI and fill, uh, Orbiter Sensor mod. Yeah, I'm putting the Erby. I'm putting an Erby on this. I'm just going to use the micro switch for the runout sensor on Erby. My my remix of Erby. Printer Prawn, welcome. Hello, hello. I'm gonna Loctite these. I'm gonna Loctite them, make sure they don't come loose after the uh, um, error. Accent pieces are on the feetsies. X1C and A1 minis. Be working on the Vorons to get them up to scratch. Understandable. There was a while there where I used my, my bamboo as my primary machine, but lately, not so much. Accent feetsies, yeah. The technical term. Accent feetsies. It's the technical term. Uh, did you buy a whole kit or did you source everything yourself? This is an LDO kit that I bought. This was not provided. I did buy this one. And it is an LDO kit. I do not recommend self-sourcing. I self-sourced my first V0. I really don't recommend it. The kits come, like, it saves you so much trouble and also you think you can buy everything cheaper if you buy kit uh, pieces individually, but then you end up paying tax and shipping on every individual transaction and it adds up pretty quick. All right, I need the two screwsy or two nuts here.
Um, this the the dark magic um, filament is more purple blue green. It's more of a purple blue than it is black. It depends what angle you look at it. Like right now, this spot looks really black to me, but I turn my head like this. Now it looks really blue, but then over here it's a bluish purple. So like it's really shifty. Uh, looking for a quality build plate to replace your warped 2.4 bed. Um, I really like precise printer parts. Precise printer parts is my personal favorite. Um, yeah, I really like precise printer parts. That's what I've got in my 2.4, my 0 0.1, my Mercury 1, all have precise printer parts beds. They're both nice and flat, and they also have screws in the back of them that you're, uh, you put M3 screws that your build plate butts against to help align it. Um, I think it, it depends how quick you need a finished printer. Understandable. Uh, you can choose whatever you want with self-source. Yes, but you can realistically, like personally, I ended up paying a fair bit more self-sourcing than I would have with an LDO kit for my Zero. And I still could have bought the individual parts that I wanted and been cheaper, honestly. Uh, my 2K to self-source my 350V2, but that was before kits were really there. I mean, that's understandable. This I built my V0 a couple of years ago now, so kits were not as cheap or available then. Had like a, had there been a $300 Formbot kit then, I might have bought, bought that and then uh, bought the individual parts I wanted on top of that. I don't know. Honestly, I bought this kit because I wanted to have another V0. I wanted another V0 in my in my bunch, uh, in my in my studio, and so I bought an LDO kit because it was going to give me what I wanted without having to mess around. It's got good quality bearings and linear rails and everything I pretty much would have put in the machine is in the kit. So, boom, done. I got it Black Friday sale and I got it for a screaming deal too. So. Uh, a lot of people buy a cheaper kit and then augment with the partial parts and whatever they want. Yeah. Um, any experience with the two into one hot ends? I have a little. I have a, a Fatus Tai Chi in one of my machines, in one of my V0s. I never had much luck with it. I never got it dialed in worth a shit. Um, how many V0s do you have? I, I have three right now. Uh, I gave away the blue one at Smurf. I have a, a red one that I'm going to be giving away. I, I owe to give away for a giveaway from some time ago. I haven't gotten around to doing. And this cookie cad one, I intend to keep. And then my green one, I have. So I currently have three. We got feet. Uh, all right. Z motor. Z motor. Z motor. Z motor mount. Love the color scheme. Awesome. I only serialized my first one. Uh, love to see the bed alignment screws become a more standard thing. Yeah, so would I. They make such a big difference. Uh, they make such a damn big difference. Uh, I want to check, make sure I'm not skipping steps here in the LDO guide. Do not apply lubricant to the lead screw. Okay. Get pinched and scorched your fingers. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I saw. Um, I saw what Heart K is doing now, um, and I think I'm going to do that on a Trident. And I'm 99% sure I only saw it in passing and it was like a brain uh, lit up my brain moment. Um, an aha moment. Light bulb. Um, he drills into the side of his beds, drills into the side of the bed and then taps it and puts a washer, like a nice size washer on there. And that's his guide. That's what bumps into. I think I'm going to do on the trident. I'm probably going to do the back corners. So two from the side, two at the back. And that way, like a like a bamboo bed, it'll be guided right into where it needs to go every time. Um, yeah, 
having the backstop, if nothing else, is a big deal. Found a part for the 2.4 to stop the bed. It works great. Yeah, those printable standoff things. I don't love those. They work, but um, they work, but I just don't love the design of them, and I've never bothered remixing them. My 2.4, I have the precise printer parts bed, so I don't need those. My next 2.4 is getting a Mandala Roseworks bed. Um, that's getting a, Mon a Mandala Roseworks bed. I just got to... I'm going to probably do the drill trick to that. Really can't see them, so don't mind the design. Yeah, reasonable. I'm just such a... I'm so fucking... I'm anal as hell about design stuff. As a designer myself, I'm just, like, picky. I'm really, really picky about the way things are designed on my printers. There's almost... there's. It's rare that there's a single part on a machine that I don't redesign in some way, shape, or form. Like, even just a very minor tweak, but I, I often do it. It's a problem. One could say it's a disorder. One could say. Probably the ASD. Can't help myself. Can't help myself. You're a hot rodder after all. You are correct. Can't leave anything alone. Nothing stays stock. Adding your touch. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Nothing stays stock. I mean, I... Uh, have I made any other designs for this other than the hex back panel? Uh, the hex back panel is the only thing I really did specifically for this. Well, not specifically that. I already have the hex back panel on my original 0 0.1. I I controlled myself on this one because I just wanted to get this project done. Um, so I tweaked a lot of things on this, just minor, but not nothing particularly special for it. Nope. Nothing really went out of my way to design for this one. All right, now it's time for for that that there so i gotta put in the anti-backlash nut anti-backlash nut Can you see these? Hello. Welcome. Spot a Loctite. Not going to hurt anybody. I don't know how well Loctite will work into a Teflon nut, but we'll find out. How many printers do you know? How many Voron printers do you own, I'm assuming you're asking, and use regularly? Two. I, I, well, I use two regularly. I own, technically I only own three right now. Um, this will be, this and the Trident I'm building right now will be the fourth and the fifth that I'll have. And then I'm gonna get rid of one of them. Um, so I'll have four. And then I'm building another 2.4, so I will have five. Yes, I will have five till we're done the builds that are on deck right now. So, currently, I really only have two that are fully built and I use on a regular basis, and one more of it's fully built, but I don't use it. That's the Seabor. The Seabor Zero. I don't use it. I have it. Don't use it. Okay, whoa! <laughs> I forgot that would spin down like that. 
Okay, I need the backlash nut and spring. There we go. Where do you source PEI sheets? Uh, replacing your peed up. Um, you know, I really don't have a go-to source. Lately, I've been liking ones I've been getting from Fabrico from their Honey Badger line. Uh, and I want to try out ones from West 3D. Um, like, the Fabrico ones are black, but I like. But they like, I just legitimately like them every which way, but I like that they're black for when I'm filming. Uh, makes it my life a little easier. The gold can be too bright and overexposed. Um, but I don't like that this one is only single-sided. It's not double-sided. I don't care for that. West 3D has a black one that's double-sided. I want to pick up to put in my 2.4. So West 3D, Fabrico, they both have like nice black ones. Uh, your Seaboard Zero point, uh, V0 was one of their first kits with the issues. Uh, no, I got rid of that one. Uh, the Seaboard one that I have is a 0 0.2. That was the second kit. That was the second kit that had issues. <laughs> Do you ever use glass? Nope. I stopped using glass a very long time ago. I never liked glass. Not a fan of glass in the least. I use a Hicktop PEI. I had one of those on like a, I think my Neptune two i put one of those on and it was good yeah like a handful of my machines just have whatever amazon special pei plates on them and for the most part they've been fine the only pei plates i ever got that were garbage this doesn't seem uh these no these eights aren't reaching what the hell or unless i missed the nut i probably missed the nut Uh, the Nevermore filter in this will be the same color. So it'll be the top body of the, the actual filter section of it will be the unicorn. And then the, um, the, yeah, it'll be unicorn. And then the base where the fans are will be this dark magic. Um, never had a bad PEI sheet. I got a couple of bad ones recently. You know what it is? Uh, I don't know if anybody saw Fizek had um, had ones you get custom printed stuff on. I don't know if anybody saw those. I got a couple of those, and they were garbage. Uh, I'm trying MF Nano on my LDO. Yeah, Maker um, uh, Maple Leaf Maker was in here before talking about that. I gotta look at it. I haven't looked at it. I haven't printed the Nevermore for this yet, so I might try that. Um. Yeah. I got some of those those print those ones where they print your own stuff on. Uh, I got them with like uh, my logo on one of them, and uh, my doodle background design that I use in videos. Sometimes I got the that on a couple other ones. The very first time I heated it to uh, oh still here, welcome. Um, the very first time I heated it to over a hundred, uh, like over a hundred degrees Celsius, which I always run at, it bubbled. It didn't bubble, like, I couldn't feel the bubble, but I could see the bubble under the PEI. So, like, whatever layer they printed, I think what it is, they take a bare sheet, they print something on it, and then they put PEI over top of that, and it it was noticeable. Like, it bubbled. Thoughts on CNC parts instead of printed parts? Kind of takes away some of the spirit of a Voron, but it'll help you push things harder and faster, and if you want a heated chamber, you should probably have them. So... The Trident has mostly CNC, uh, all CNC parts. 3D Print Junkie, for, hello from Mexico. Hello, welcome to the stream. Glad to have you here. Where the heck are these nuts? There they are. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Have you ventured into laser cutters and engravers? Yes. I've got a um, add-ons and mods for this. Filter is the biggest thing. 
Uh, the smell doesn't bother me. I get a headache from styrene, and I dislike uh, from ABS and ASA smell, uh, which is not a good sign. I work around the machines printing ABS and ASA daily, so I just don't want to mess around with my health. And, um, ah, and what was the, the other thing? Um, and the, the film that it can leave, like ABS and ASA can leave on the inside of machines. I don't want to deal with that. And filters help with that too. Um, have you ventured into laser cutters and engravers? Yes. I've got a X-Tool P2 CO2 laser. I've used it in a couple of videos now. I quite like it. It's got a few issues, but overall I like it. Overall I like it. I really like that I can cut V0 panels. It's not big enough to cut uh, like 2.4 panels or uh, Trident panels, but it is, it is big enough for V0 panels. And I do like that about it. Come on. I'm trying to get this nut lined up and it's fighting me. There it is. Filters are pretty convenient too, look cool, fill up the empty space. They also help with chamber temperature too, because they're circulating, circulating air around the chamber to equalize chamber temperature, so they help with that as well. Like my, my 2.4, since the, uh, if I start a print on that at 105 degrees Celsius bed temperature, 245 on the hot end, printing away, I have found that if I turn the Nevermore on to full blast, in a few minutes, it will raise my chamber temperature by anywhere between two to five degrees Celsius. Um, or wait, I think I even went higher than that before. I'm absolutely achieving significantly higher chamber temperatures with the, the filter circulating air in the chamber than I was without it. Uh, is this filament I'm using ABS? Yes, it is ABS. Their page isn't exceptionally set up uh, for um, for the ABS yet because it's a new product. It is on their site, but it's it's not well set up yet or easy to find because it's such a new product. I don't even know if it's actually available yet for people. I got it pre-release, so. Uh, but it is ABS. Well, will your hot end upgrade for the X1C, would you recommend the E3D Obsidian or BQ Panda Revo? Obsidian. Uh, I recommend the Obsidian. A couple reasons. I personally don't find... Um, I don't find changing hot ends or nozzle sizes on the, uh, the X1 to be particularly useful for me. I rarely do it. I rarely did it before, and I don't do it at all now. Uh, I don't really see it, and also it's not—it doesn't flow as well as the Obsidian, the uh, Panda Revo. I haven't tested mine yet. They did send me one, but I haven't tested it yet. Um, I asked for a P1P version, and they sent me an X1 version, so I have to like either get them to replace it or uh, or resolder the wires on it to the uh, the P1P variant. Um, and as a result, it, uh, everybody I know who's tested the Panda Revo hasn't gotten very good flow out of it. Uh, it, I think it comes with the high flow nozzles. I thought it comes with a high flow nozzle, the Panda Revo, or maybe they sell it in both configurations. I don't know. God damn it. I had a hard time getting this one in here. Nice to see new colors in ABS. Yeah, it's it's a fun difference. I'm 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 enjoying that they they made something new. I've always loved their colors, so it's really fun. Doesn't uh, doesn't the Panda Revo have? Uh, you can just put the Obix City and High Flow nozzle on it. Yes, you can. Uh, but I haven't tested this yet. But people I have talked to who have tested it say. God damn it, all that trouble to get that in there and it missed the nut. 
Oh, you painted my ass. Um. Error. Um. I haven't tested the Avox City in High Flow Nozzle on Revo yet. I have some. I haven't tested them. And I haven't tested the Panda Revo yet. But everybody I've talked to says the Panda Revo with high flow nozzles does not flow as well as the Avoxidian E3D, like actual bamboo nozzle. My bamboo nozzle, I'm running at like 40 millimeters cubed all day long. A few people I've talked to say they barely break over 30 with the uh, Panda Revo. Again, I have not tested that. I don't know. But I was unimpressed. Part of why I haven't gotten to testing it, it was like, oh. If that's how it's gonna be, it's really. I wanted. To, I'm gonna put it in in Ruby's P1P. Like it'll be an improvement over the stock hot end in her P1P. But um, I was hoping for more. They claim 40. Everybody claims more than things flow. It is a longer melt zone on the uh, bamboo hot end, I think, yes. I do believe that is the case. God, this one is such a pain to get in because it's right next to the Z limit switch. I'm trying to get this, this one last Z screw in here is proving a pain. Come on. You can go in your home. Just mix up all the quotes. That'll help. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't tested it yet, so I have no idea. Um, what does Ruby print? Nothing. <laughs> Ruby has has never operated her printer on her own. That was the whole idea, and just we just haven't gotten around to like the lessons and teaching her and everything. And so when she wants stuff printed, she just asked me to print it for her. Um, so sooner or later we will get around to doing it, but when are you converting an Ender bed slinger to Ender NG since who needs bed slinger these days? I'm going to, I'm waiting for the next update of Ender NG. There's an update coming for the Ender NG and I'm waiting on that. It'd be a great video idea. That was the original idea with the P1P was we were going to do a whole series of like introducing her to 3D printing and like teaching her and stuff, but she... She's just not comfortable on camera. She just isn't. So, not gonna happen. We've just come to terms with the fact she's not comfortable on camera and that's that. Maybe someday. She's good on camera is the worst part of it. Like she is good on camera, but like, you know, women do get picked apart in videos. I see it all the time with female creators and, and it would be hard for me to not be I don't care when people pick on me. It's easy for me to just joke about it. And sometimes it bugs me, but not a lot. Uh, but if it was my wife, I might be a little more irritated by it. Norton, thanks for being here. I don't think we're going to be streaming for too much longer. It's almost four hours now. So thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Appreciate you being here and catching on or hanging out with us. All right, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I, it's totally reasonable, I understand. I know like, I did that once when uh, when I had Ellie on, I think I, I think I wrote in the comments of like, like I pinned a comment or something when I had Ellie on the, on the channel, where I was like, any, Picking on anybody is just not acceptable. Anybody else on my channel, I put myself out there. It's just the way life is for me. This is what I've chosen to do. It's a, a fact of life. But other people I ask to be on my channel, I don't put up with people picking on them. I don't. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Okay. We got Zed. With Zed. Alright. I am really hungry. 
we are at the point where we could put the gantry in, but I'm just too darn hungry. Uh, not to overstep, came across pics, your, your wife, your missus is a doll. Thank you. Thank you. Compliments are appreciated. <laughs> I pick on myself. I'm like a small, angry gnome. I'm a bald dude who's pushing 40 with a gigantic nose. Like, I'm not that self-conscious. She is, she's actually legitimately good on camera. Um, Ruby is, like, literally, she's just, she is good at being on camera. She can talk to a camera well. She's not great at projecting her voice like I am, um, but that's something you learn. And, you know, I just boost her audio. We started filming at least a full video and it was going pretty well, but she, we just never finished the project and then she just didn't want to continue. So, yeah. Maybe someday we'll get her on. Someday. Her, she's going to be contributing to videos more as we move forward, like uh, the IKEA hack video I did recently. The whole time lapse where I like had the drawing sketch of what the video was going to be um, uh, or what the project was going to look like beforehand. She did that. She she sketched it and then she created the time lapse of the sketch. There's going to be more of that in the future. You guys look good together. Thank you. She could do a drive by. Yeah, I, 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 I toy with the idea of like oh well just like uh my christmas decorating video she was in that she was in my christmas decorating video but just like us decorating our christmas tree you know not talking or anything so i hate hearing my own voice so i can relate yeah like when when we were working on the last video she was going to be in that we never finished um she refused to see any of it she's like don't show me the footage don't don't just tell me if I'm doing a good job. Direct me if I need to like speak up or whatever, but that's it. Don't show me. More cats in the videos. Yes, more cats, definitely. Um, all right, folks, uh, I'm going to call it here. I've got to go eat something. I'm getting, st I'm starting to get real hungry. It's time for me to go eat something and relax for the evening, I think. It's what now? 7.30? Yeah. Good time to make dinner and watch a movie or something. So, all right, folks, thank you very much for being here. We made some solid progress on the little V0. Tomorrow morning, we will be streaming again. I will be back tomorrow morning. Um, I think we figured 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S., which should be... We did math earlier, I forget. Uh, 2 p.m. GMT? Was it 2 p.m. GMT, I think? Uh, so I'm aiming for tomorrow morning. We'll revisit the Trident. We'll be back on the Trident tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, 9, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, whatever that is for you. Yeah, it's going to be too early for a lot of folks West Coast and mid Midwest here in the U.S. Some of the folks in Europe were asking about doing an earlier stream because they're, they're always watching me late at night. So it's mainly I'm doing a little earlier tomorrow for those folks. And also I want to get in before Steve does his stream because I don't want to overlap with Steve in his afternoon stream. So, all right, folks, thank you very much for being here, for hanging out. Made some good, solid progress on the V0 build for one day of work. I'm happy. I wanted to get it belted today, but that was asking too much. So, all right, folks, thank you all for being here. I appreciate your support. Please consider dropping a like if you're not already subscribed to Mandic Labs. Remember, this is not the same Mandic Really channel. This is Mandic Labs. Please consider subscribing, and uh, thank you, folks. Uh, all right, folks, I will catch you all in the next one. See ya. Bye-bye. Mm, yeah.